For the longest of times, content creators who made anything that required the voices of politicians or celebrities relied exclusively on one site, Eleven Labs. The proverbial powerhouse of AI voice generation, with their advanced technology, anyone could take a voice clip of a famous person and have them say whatever they wanted. No other site had come close to the level of quality that was possible, although many tried. The videos featuring some of the biggest names in the American political space would gain, in some instances, hundreds of thousands of views. The sub count saw no limit and the revenue was plentiful. It was a great time to be a content creator. However, as the presidential race drew ever closer, the AI giant began to add restraints on anyone who tried to use the voices of the presidents of the United States. Some believed it would be a temporary measure and would be resolved after the election. Some believed Eleven Labs would only get worse and increase the range of restrictions. Now, in the last week or so, Eleven Labs did indeed go further in their restrictions and all voices were banned. After some outrage, they have since reversed this to just the presidents, but not for everyone. For some, it was too late, as they moved on to other sites. Although less reliable with quality, these at least did not have the restrictions in place. Some have continued to use Eleven Labs, although with modifications to attempt to bypass detection. But whether they stayed or moved on, it cannot be denied that this has caused a highly negative backlash at the once highly regarded giant of AI tech. Now with the election race coming to an end, questions are being asked. Will they lift the ban afterwards? Will anyone care? Eleven Labs, tyrann tyrannical monster or misunderstood villain? I am CraftyGG and tonight I am joined with several other content creators who have been caught up with the Eleven Labs scandal. Welcome to Roll for Discussion. Joining me in tonight's podcast session, we have the following content creators. A fairly new matey who, for the longest of times, exclusively used his mobile to create his content. Aura AI. Yeah, glad to be here. I mean, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you can say long-time listener, first-time caller. I kind of came in when there was a bit of a lull in the scene because, you know, not as much content was coming out. And, you know, I was sitting here on my combine out in the field. And I was like, I can't just listen to Crafty's or Malathrax's campaigns for the fourth time in a row. So I just kind of made my own. A matey who uses some of the most visually pleasing artwork within his videos, Mecha King Leo. Thanks for the compliment. It means a lot that you actually think that is you and Malathrax were like one of the few that I started watching at the beginning. And yeah, I'm just here doing the same as Aurora AI, yeah, just like filling in the fact that like, I want more stories. Like that, that's about it. Like, you know, I just want more stories. I started this just because I needed more content to listen to at work. A matey who uses only women politicians in his campaign, possibly <clears throat> securing the first campaign to ever host a female president, President Ashenhart. Yes, um, the main reason I chose to use women politicians was because nobody else was using them. So I wanted to be the first, and fingers crossed, um, at the time of this recording, the polls haven't closed in the U.S., but fingers crossed, my, one of my paladin, my paladin character will be the next POTUS. And a matey who has taken the longest bathroom break between uploads... And is regarded as one of the top favorites of the AI president's D&D genre, Malifrex. Hey, yeah, it has been a long bathroom break. Um, yeah, I know there were a lot of people who didn't even know I was coming back for a long time. I didn't know for sure if I was coming back, but uh, it feels great to be making videos again and uh, reconnecting with the community, for sure. But that isn't everyone. We also have a surprise guest who uses the president's, but not for D&D. From Pokemon to tweaking tier lists, please welcome Uvox. 
Hey everyone, I'm glad to be back. Uh, just uploaded the new video today, a little bit late, a little bit, almost a week after Halloween, but we got the Halloween candy list out, so <laughs> it's uh, kind of insane, but I'm glad to be here. Welcome, mateys, and thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to take part in this discussion. As stated in the intro, we will be going over the drama of Eleven Labs, but we'll also be covering a second subject, content creator burnout. We'll take some questions from the viewers, which have been posted in advance. And finally, we have a DD and d trivia minigame, which the viewers will also be able to take part in. Uh, for the viewers listening, if, you've enjoy, if you enjoy this content, please uh, consider subscribing, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and leave a comment below. And so, let's get the dice rolling. <clears throat> so, gents, um, I think I'm right in saying that everyone here had has been affected in some way when it comes to 11 laps would i be right yes uh oh, yeah. i don't think i don't think you can say otherwise right yeah yeah i think everybody yeah, because everyone got yeah. started because of it and everyone is affected by it in, in some way yeah exactly um so my i guess my question's probably going to be just straight off the bat is um what would you probably find has probably been the most difficult part of this whole situation and we'll, we'll go around the room so we don't risk like like talking over each other so uh you vox you want to uh, kick us off so i stopped using 11 labs like what april april march right. because that was the first wave of bands they did when their when their, their detection software still wasn't perfect but it got a it got a good amount of people and a lot of people stopped like um what's his name uh fellow that made the first uh ai presidents play uno dalton vance his his content got his, his 11 labs voices got blocked so he stopped making stuff uh probably some other creators maybe crucial was one of them he's been gone a while uh but my voices still worked up until like a what a week or two ago but you know just the fact that they started banning voices i didn't want to be paying for a subscription that could at any moment take away my voices so I searched for, I was actually looking in the play HT already because 11 labs was so expensive and play was significantly cheaper. So that's what I did. I, I wasn't really affected by the most recent band wave, but you know, I had a lot of people who were a few creators. I knew a lot of people who were uh, a few creators in particular that had a lot of voices and they were all banned. Yeah, I, I think when you were last uh, on here, we, we obviously were discussing things about uh, 11 labs and i think you were one of the first ones because you had been quite vocal about it uh i think before pretty much anybody uh about this I, I think I, I was probably the first one to make a post about it to my knowledge yeah because like it was like <laughs> an hour after they did it <laughs> yeah. i was i was right on it because we in the discord were discussing it a guy one of the creators was trying to clone voices and then we look at we looked at their post and then i immediately made a response post about it yeah that was it i'm surprised it took as long as it did as long as they did to ramp up the bands but i guess it's because of the election or california being california or something who knows i mean it's a bit hard to it's a bit hard to say i i am surprised actually that it did take them this long to to get to that point you know i would have thought if they were going to start if they were going to you know, drop that ban hammer, it would have been a lot sooner than it had been. Because it almost... Uh, yeah, like, within three months or something, like, yeah. you know, maybe that maybe they would have gotten an initial ban wave out, and then they would have tweaked their software, yeah. and then it would have got everyone, like, a lot sooner. Well, it kind of feels like it almost... You almost... It was almost um, like there was, like, a false sense of, like, security. It's like, oh, it, it's, it's probably not going to happen. Like, they, yeah, they've done a they've done a soft ban because there were still some creators that were getting through. Uh, I don't, I don't want to I don't want to name any particular channels on here, just in case, just on the off chance there's, there's some <laughs> 11 Lab spy listening in. He's like, yes, tell you me which know. channel's still able to use them without any problems. <laughs> but I, I do I do know there's at least one channel comes to my mind, and they've yeah. told me that they haven't been affected by it. It's all like, ooh. Yeah, there's like 99 percent of yeah 99 percent of creators now have been have lost their voices, but there's still still a couple that have slipped under the radar. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of crazy, but you know, good for them if if they would still want to be using that. 
Uh, I, so I, I heard you mention in the intro that they've unbanned some of the other, they've, they've taken a, a couple steps back. That's correct. Um, it was it, because know. everyone left in droves. <laughs> I, Took the I, money. Yeah. That was when they banned every voice for everybody. Like yeah. nobody could make clone voices during the last week out, leading up to the election. Yeah. I'm fairly certain they and it stated that was their intention back when they first started this all. It was their intention to eventually to, get to this point to make all voices require verification. You would think they would do that already. Yeah. Th there's they a, certainly there's a couple... teased that they were going to, but uh, you know, the almighty dollar kind of prevented them from doing it. I feel like, yeah, there's, and then there's a couple they sites... went for it. Yeah, there's a couple sites I've encountered that require verification, but I do mean a couple. Maybe even one. I can't. I can't quite remember. I think it might have been just. Been, uh, what was it? Resemble AI, maybe. Hmm. But yeah, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> well, no, yeah, someone. So I can't remember who was who was the first one to sort of uh, bring it up that they were they had reversed it. Was was it someone in here? Was it Mecca? Was it you? Was uh... I remember? I remember AI Senpai. Uh, he made a post about it. And he was someone you may you may not know him, but AI Senpai is just someone that makes general AI videos, and he has a ton of voices. And he said they're all banned for like a day, and then they all became unbanned. Well, it was just within our um, because there's a few of us that were in a we got our own like D and D president sort of group, and I right right. I, I think and Mecca, am I right? Was it yourself that I, I brought it? No, it wasn't. No, I can't it wasn't. think of who it was. I actually never got a chance to use Eleven Labs. I was literally about to because everyone kept saying it's so easy and then this happened and it makes no sense like do they really think one or two weeks prior to the election is going to make that big of a difference like they're really banking on that last second voter i think for the most part it's you know people have kind of made up their minds since it's been shoved down everyone's throats True. well you know there is there is always going to be the dumb person who's going to believe anything that somebody's ai That's that an true. ai clone of them says like i think <laughs> I think from their perspective, if they wanted to be consistent about it, they should have never allowed any clone voices at all because, yeah. you know, consider, like, not even just for politicians, but, like, a, a bully in high school could clone their victim's voice to make them say anything, and Eleven Labs is just going to let that happen, you know, without verification. Like, you know, if they wanted to be consistent about it, then they should just ban all the voices, but, you know, they shouldn't because that's how we make movies. That's how we make content. That's no. you can make some funny stuff. You can make some insightful stuff. You can make great content. This is a great power we've been given here. Something exactly. that was unimaginable yeah. years ago. Yeah. Not, even, been, like, not even a many years ago, like three years ago, you could never imagine doing something like this. I don't know if you remember May of last year and and you know, you know, politics aside, the meme got so big that the presidential um uh race was uh, like directly memeing it because like uh, DeSantis, he, uh, I believe, yeah, I was in May of last year. He announced his candidacy, and then the Trump campaign put out like a like a fake like Discord call. I heard about that. You guys remember that? Yeah, it, it, it yeah, you know, like that. politics aside, it was it was pretty funny. Like Donald Trump's own campaign used the AI president I, voice. That's that's, that's oh, a, actually hilarious, but I think resources should be put into countering it like the not like making sure we can know it's fake rather than just stopping it all together because the genie's out of the bottle you know yeah. it's yeah. not just 11 labs that can do this there's many sites that can do things to the quality or to almost the quality of 11 labs and it's just there, there's going to be a closed software uh, like a closed software you can download on your computer that 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 is as good as Eleven Labs very soon, yeah, right? It's, just gonna take like, time. it's, it's only natural within the next like two or three years, like tops, right? We're gonna have something that's as good as Eleven Labs that we can download and use for free. Well, I mean, I have I have uh, recently given uh, this particular site a bit of a knock. Play HT um, only because right. I do find that the quality difference is it's so noticeable and it's such it's so it, much more of a drag. Yes, it is to get the work done. But I would say at the moment, as far as I've seen, they seem to be a pretty close competitor. As, and as I say I use close quite loosely. I, you know, if I, I say close <laughs> with like you know ten miles between them, sort of thing, but. I haven't 
ease of use is not play specialty. No. You have to no, you have know. to play around with things a good bit, unlike Eleven Labs, where you can usually just toss it in. No, or that, emphasis. On, a, on Eleven Labs, like just because I use it for the NPCs, you could put a lot of sentences and it comes out coherent. Dude, you do that on Play HT, that, <laughs> you come up with some crazy things. I literally just do one or two sentences most. Yeah. And yeah, I had to like it, make them smaller too. Like the run on sentences? Words. No way. No way right. can you do run on sentences. They don't work. <laughs> They'll repeat words, and if the paragraph's too long, sometimes it'll just go into, like, a dystopian gurgle. Like, you know, you'll have yeah. Obama talking about, like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, I'll roll for attack, and here's my damage, and, and this is how and I'll finish screech. off my opponent. And then it'll just end with, like, with a, an autistic screech. Yeah, just... <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's really thrown me off when I'm, you know, I just, I'm hitting generate, and I'm looking at something else while I'm doing other bits, and then I hit the play... And I'll listen to like Trump saying whatever, and then he'll start. He'll finish his sentence. He go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's hilarious. I go for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it. Yeah, if you it works quite well with the tweak impression. I, I go for that. That's hilarious. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I play has been disappointingly slow on updates. I really hope they shift into you know start focusing more here. Mm. Actually, pu- like getting quality updates out. They've released, you know, their Gargamel model, and they've released 3.0, but it's nothing, nothing that's quite like mm-hmm. Eleven Labs yet. Mm-mm. In terms yeah. of its ease of ease of use, like, like I said, Eleven Labs and even Voxbox, you can just drag a file in there, and it will probably work. Oh, yeah, probably. You don't, you don't yeah. even have to play around with the similarity or the stability or stuff like that. It'll probably work. I know we're talking AI voices, but uh, they're it's particularly emotionless with Play HT. There's like with well, yeah. Eleven Labs, if you put caps or exclamation points or even question marks, it'll do it. But Play HT is 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 just the most uh, Ben Stein sounding voice box that I've ever met. I don't with. think it is. I don't think it is. I don't know why people say that. I think um, if you use the 2.0 model. And you use the emotions feature. You and even if the emotions are all the way down, you can start getting some emotion there. Yeah, I remember when I was using 3.0 Gargamel, um, and then turning the stability way to the right, and then turning intensity pretty up. It could get some emotion, but it would usually be I, the emotion that was matched by the clone. They like by the voice clip. So if the person is like sounding angry, then usually the emotion is kind of angry. Interesting. That makes sense. So, I I get I can get pretty good results with 2.0. It's only usually specific weird voices that 2.0 struggles with, like Squidward. It cannot <laughs> do Squidward. Period. I, I will not. I will admit that the standard 2.0 cannot do it. The Gargamel can. Gargamel's good with weird voice. Like like I said in my uh, addressing the Eleven Labs drama video, yeah. it's like. An Eleven Labs mic. It's really similar to Eleven Labs, but it's like uh, spoken through an Xbox mic. That's what Gargamel is. Man, Gargamel is the only one right now that like, I can get to work. I tried Minimap, the, the new model, the 3.0 one. Yeah, Every I don't like Minimap that much. sound like robots except for Ben. Ben sounds kind of better, but I just didn't want to keep switching back and forth. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it's called 3.0 Mini. Where's the regular yeah. 3.0? Come on. 3.0, that's, that's, that's got to be like that's got to be like better than 11 labs. Come on, get the regular <laughs> 3.0 out. Well, they had 3.0 Gargamel, and then I think they replaced it with Mini. I'm not sure. No, it's two. You it's could, 2.0, 2.0 Gargamel, and then yeah. and then it's 3.0 Mini. Yeah. Oh. You could, you could change. Yeah, they renamed. Yeah, I think they they originally had 3.0 Gargamel, and then they got rid of it for Mini, I believe. Mm. So, but yeah, I'm not sure if you can go back to 3.0 Gargamel because that was the one that I really liked, and I'm not sure if it was an issue with their site, but I could do infinite regenerations on their site um, so long as it was the same sentence. Um, they got rid of that now, but I was able to do that, and that was fun. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I did not know but they got rid of that. Okay. <laughs> Eleven Labs, they've sort of been all over the place with their... With their um where they stand on what voices you can and can't clone. At the very beginning, they just banned Trump and Biden, right? Mm-hmm. Which, which and then I for a few weeks later. A yeah. I mean, yeah. They've been, well, I mean, 11 Labs has been around since March of 2023, and then they started banning the politicians a full year after, almost a year right. after. Yeah, it took them like a year to start doing that. But let me, let me, let me say this. 
they just they started with just Trump and Biden and okay, their terms of service have always stated you cannot ban voices other than your own or ones you have explicit permission to. They've all that's always said that, but they let you clone anything, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it got to the point where they explicitly banned just Trump and Biden. Yep. And then it got to the point where they started banning politicians. So Barack Obama, you know, he started getting taken away. George Bush started getting Bill Clinton. They, they all started going. Um, yeah, Kamala Harris. Got, they, they got rid of Kamala. They got rid of um, AOC. They got rid of Elizabeth Warren. They just got rid of Lord Boebert. So I'm sad about that. So now all I have on there are, well, they're trying to get rid of Sarah Sanders, but their algorithm, their, their detection's a bit off. But, um, Rest but, in peace, so yeah. Towers. Towers they, have gone, too. No, so no. they're they're kind of they're skirting around the like they're they're playing the whole like it's in our TOS we can enforce it but they choose not to sort of thing you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's like it's a rule so they can enforce it whenever they want like twins. but since they're losing a lot of money they're not enforcing it it's that sort of thing you know which does beg the question then once the election is over and obviously the time of this recording we are on election night so we don't know, obviously know what's going on when this airs on friday we should hopefully know what what the situation is but what do you what do you guys reckon the possibilities are that they will uplift the ban on the presidents i don't mm. think it's going to happen i, I, I think i'm not hopeful i'm not yeah, hopeful i think either. the main the main problem that i see is just ai in general has been illegal uh, wild west of sorts and the technology's been going like crazy and the laws have not been going like crazy and now there's some pretty big lawsuits in the works with other ai companies and so i think that especially someone like 11 labs where they've already gained a substantial portion of the um potential customers i think they're just going to play it safe and i don't think they're going to allow at least the major politicians like trump and biden and i bet kamala will stay banned but that's just my guess i'm sort of surprised they backtracked at all on voices uh even letting uh any voices back in but yeah i would agree I i'm kind of surprised they did that but i i thought they were just going to start pandering to corporate companies as like you know they'd go to like amazon or google or whatever company needs professional voice cloning and pander to them for money since they lost all of the public basically but like I think that that seems to be where they're going. Just just That's... just for one simple reason, like I don't know, like what apps you guys use or like what for editing and all that. But like I use Filmora and Canva. Both of them are now trying to introduce AI voicing yes. into the similar for businesses. So oh. I kind of feel like if anything, the market's gonna get really saturated, and Eleven Labs is gonna see that like oh, there's more competition for just the regular basics things. They're pretty expensive too, by the way. Like I know that they're um really good. But ultimately, any business is going to try to go with the most like cost effective method, period. Like, even if it sounds a little bit less, I mean, if it gets the job done, they're like, eh, let's go call it a day. We're good. Well, let's so face it. Well, if if corporations are going to are going to be using this, they're not they're, they're definitely not going to be the sort that are going to be trying to use celebrity voices unless obviously they get the permission from the celebrities. Oh. But at that, that point, they might as well just hire the celebrity to do a few lines of dialogue. Or something anyway if they're going to be using it like for advertising or, or whatnot so i mean it i don't i, I can't see i have to try to get the right words here with the with the increase in in the market which is inevitably going to be happening right we know mm -hmm. that there's already a rise in other in other sites yes their quality is is nothing in comparison to 11 labs at the moment but give enough times like you've said you know give it a few years we will definitely see some increase there. I think, given how much of a backlash that Eleven Labs got, and I think the real, the real reason why they they did pull back on it is because they probably saw a massive dip in their sub uh, in their subscriptions. Because literally uh, everyone, yeah, because yeah. the majority of people that are using it are using it for things like YouTube channels, making content and stuff. And if 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 they're going to turn around and say, "Oh no, 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 we're we're not allowing you to use this," and everything guess what all your customers are going to go away and go to your competitors so it just it makes it makes sense that they would try to draw it back but i think by them by them if they kept this ban going past the election 
I, I think all it's going to end up doing is hurting them even more. And they're, they're it's getting into something else as well. Their tier pricing. Is is it just me, or is it just seem the most ridiculous thing that you start off at like five dollars, then it goes twenty dollars, and then it skyrockets to like a hundred dollars? Yeah, insane, it's sort of yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It goes from five to twenty two to hundred. <laughs> like what? No, the math you provided, Uvox, like I was just looking at it and I was like, Are you kidding me? One thousand three hundred and fifty that's like a big <laughs> difference. I didn't do anything that's... crazy. I just added up three times. That's yeah. that's like that's crazy. And some channels it's like look at super frail. expensive. Frail Dude, he oh, did so guy. much. He did daily. Yeah, yeah oh, poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly don't see Eleven Labs really bouncing back for creators like us. I think it's been just kind I, of disparaged. And now, you know, I, I believe they're partnering, you know, they get some of that Bezos money. I, you know, they partnered with uh, Washington Post. So I think that the future for Eleven Labs is going to be capital interests. Yeah. And then um, earlier we had used that term Wild West. So I see there's going to be some desperado down the line that's going to create yeah. something. You know, just yeah. as long as the technology keeps on going, and we'll well, we'll have them all back before you know we know. No matter what, AI renegades, we shall see. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what, sometime soon we will have high quality, oh, better than Eleven Labs voice cloning everywhere, eventually. Yeah. So eventually. it's just a matter of when. But for now, I think Eleven Labs, they're they're like an animal. They're gonna do whatever they can to survive, right? Yeah. Yeah, and if and if they have to ban all their voices, they will. Right, oh, yeah. they're gonna try right. to like, like avoid as much legal trouble as possible. So That's what I believe. Speaking of legal yeah. trouble, um, Aura, you were saying that there were there were some legal issues going on at the moment. Are, are you re you referring to Suno? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I had, Suno, I, had, I, I was I, I was seeing that, yeah. Yeah, so for those who don't know, Suno uh, is, a, is a site that you can create music for, with. Uh, you can generate your own lyrics, um, or you just put in a few sort of like genres and styles that you're looking for and put in like a, a topic, and it will generate a couple of versions of uh, of that said music, and you can have it as just purely instrumental, or you can have lyrics involved. Uh, the first person actually I saw who did anything that was with, was uh, AI Guy. Actually, he posted a video. I think he had like intro videos for each of his characters, and uh, I thought it was absolutely amazing. But I believe that Suno are getting sued. Um, Me because uh, yeah, they, most they've been used. They were they were using. I think apparently other people's like they were using. Yeah, voices. well, <laughs> well they have to have it. They have to have it for you know kind of a basis to create off of. So I know like our. IAA, the Recording Industry Association of America, and Universal Music Group and Sony are kind of going after them. Yeah, Dang. if they're not part of uh, most major players, like the number one dogs in uh, AI spaces, are getting sued. Right? Mm -hmm. They're they're all getting they're all getting attacked legally for various uh, reasons. Yeah. You know, uh, book the, writers the CEO. are mad at ChatGPT. Uh, Artists are mad at stable diffusion. P people are mad at, in general, at, uh, <laughs> at Eleven Labs. I use Suno for for everything, so Suno's I, I fun. I, I, it, it's awesome. So you know, Suno's like each, fun. Of, each I, of my characters have their own theme song and everything, and, the, and I and, love. And I kind of follow it. So the CEO <laughs> claims that uh, he he's he's making you they're making unique music and not replicating like existing right. works. So well, we'll have to we'll have to just see. I mean, it's it's going to be hard to prove either or unless they. My understanding, it's no different than how image diffusion works. It takes whatever media it is and turns it into little. From my understanding, I could be completely wrong, but it mm -hmm. essentially just turns into little blots of data. And then it puts it in a database and then it can sort of rearrange that everywhere. It, it's they say it's it's learning very similar to how humans learn. That's that's their saying. It was just like, yeah, you know, if it, it, it learns how a, a human would. So if you hear a song, you might be able to replicate said song or you might be able to replicate the style of said song. You know how it sounds. Mm -hmm. Right. So they it they have they now? have a lot of the, what, so you know. Yeah, is it not usable? No, you can hop on. You can hop on Suno right now. It's oh, a, it's a really fun it, site to use. I love making yeah. hardcore death metal covers of everything. Same. 
Holy cow. <laughs> I like oh, that. Did, uh, oh, you're going to have to send me teacher. some of that. I would love to hear There's that. So yeah, funny. Teacher, and uh, There's she, so used, funny. Uh, she used a heavy metal Suno song for the periodic table for her <laughs> high school class. <laughs> oh, my God. I just wanted to make so a little like, funny. commercial jingle. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I made yeah. It- I made a Mario, uh, the like the old Mario Brothers show. I I p- copy pasted the lyrics into that, and it was like, "We're the Mario Brothers," and it was so funny. Yeah. yeah was, oh my god. It was. It's so good. <laughs> like, check out Suno just to make hardcore metal metal covers yeah. of songs. You, you yeah. get yeah. limited uh, so free funny. tokens a day. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah I, if I, you I, don't I, don't out and I got like three thousand or something. That was weird. Oh snap! Oh yeah. So. If you don't have any musical talent and you're playing D and D, you can make a D and D song about your character. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So I'll yeah, make a bard then, singing about the sun, the sunset, the sunset. So we've, we've obviously <laughs> other other um, AI uh, groups are getting mm. uh, attempted to be uh, sued. That might make it a little bit more understandable than why Eleven Labs would be going the way they're going. Perhaps they're concerned of that those sort of legal ramifications as well. That be. I think they're so. going. They're going the easiest route for sure. Yeah. They were the biggest of, and they were the best on the playground. And then, you know, legal issues and, and they had so much attention on them. And, and now with what I believe with, with capital interests that they're now they're going to try to walk that line to keep corporate sponsorship. True. Yeah. yeah now I, I mean, get bombarded by the they, ads. They got into a lot of hot water. I don't know if anyone remembers early February 2024 when there was the Biden Robo call during the Democratic primary in New Hampshire where there was a Biden, like Biden AI telling people to not vote, to save their vote for the general election. And this call was going out to a bunch of like prospective Democratic voters in New Hampshire. Um, We don't know. Did they use 11 labs for that? I believe they did use 11 labs for that. And that's why 11 labs around that time banned the Biden voice. It came after the Biden uh, robo call in New Hampshire. There's always a bad egg. Dang it. There's yeah, no logic be... behind that. I <laughs> just save there, your vote. No. We, we need the, <laughs> the we guy. need to we need to be at the point in society where we assume something's fake, right? Yeah. Well you we get a phone call it's fake before it's real if it's a big deal. Yeah. Well you get a phone call and then you're automatically assuming like are you gonna assume every phone call you get is fake? A lot of, I've actually also heard about this is that AI is that people will use AI versions of people's like friends and family to call them and ask for money, just get their yeah. number and so, put in I, whatever I, they need to put in. I, I will say, I mean, obviously AI using that, using voices, the AI voices of people like, you know, that's like the, that's like the next sort of step, but scam calls and people trying to trick you and stuff like that. That is as old as time itself though, isn't it? Like not, yep. not so much as yep. the calling, but, but people, oh, yeah. people, just people trying to trying to trick yeah. and manipulate and get you to do what they want you to do to get stuff that is yours. Like, oh, yeah. well, that is not anything new. It's just, mm-hmm. it just changes with the time. So yeah, uh, it's like it's like every time I get a phone call, I, I I get calls all the time from my uh, phone network provider saying, "Oh, we you uh, we need to give you like a twenty five percent discount because you've been overpaying your bills. Let me send you this verification code." And I know full well if I access that, I give them that code, they have access to my account. I know exactly what they're playing at because I've had them trying it for the last year. It's like. But the first time like you'd hear something like that, if you weren't aware of it, I can understand how you could you could be tricked into that sort of thing, you know? So I, it's just a case of awareness. So again, yeah. I, I do understand that there are going to be people, they're going to see something online and they are going to get the wrong idea and go, oh yeah, that actually is so-and-so saying that. I better listen to what they say. But that is such a small number of people that, would believe that sort of stuff the mass majority of people have enough intelligence to look at this sort of thing especially if you're if you're quite savvy with being online or if you've just been online for more than a year like you know that things are not always what they come across as especially when it comes to like youtube and such and i think as time goes on more people are going to get more savvy to that and thankfully we are in a bit of a day and age with with the ai technology the mass majority of the use of it is just to create entertainment most people want to want to be want to use it for entertainment yes but there is like the older audience like people 50 plus a lot of them 
are super easy to fool with this sort of stuff. Incredibly easy to fool. I've yeah, um I've seen apparently this is a thing on Facebook or social media in general, but there's people that like make AI generated like pictures of soldiers that are like missing limbs and it said yeah. like like this, you know, drop drop a wounded soldier alike. And it's so obviously fake but they just assume it's real they see it and they assume Dang. it's real it's no like one they... wish me birthday today <laughs> frowny face yeah, no yeah 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 <laughs> no one so no one wished the, no one wished this wounded soldier a happy birthday today and stuff this like woman that and then people believe it people believe it years old You're wrong. and she baked her own birthday cake this woman is yeah. 215 years old <laughs> and she baked her own birthday cake out of a pepsi bottle there who, are people who, that believe like fingers. everything Hey, hey, but to be fair, to be fair, people used to believe in texting chains, okay? They really thought that if they didn't send it out to 10 friends or more, that they were going to get cursed. Yeah, if you don't email Jeez. this to 10 people, you will die tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, tomorrow, <laughs> there are I'm people, saying. there are people that believe everything, and we yep. cannot we cannot build the world around them, all right? We need to There, right. there are a lot of people who believe everything, but in an emotional state, like say you get a call from somebody who claims they're your sister and they have their voice and they got the emotional inclinations and she's telling me, yeah, she's in a bad situation. Like it will like, you know, yes, we'd like to, I'd like to think that humans are logical, but we're just emotional, dumb animals. And it, when push comes to shove, we will fall for something if it is at the right place in time. I, I can understand where you come from. I mean, I've, I've not had the voice on the other end, but I have had it where I get messages and it's supposed and it's like it's my brother saying, you know, he's desperate for money, he's in a really bad situation. Now if I had just run with emotion like the first thing I'm thinking is, oh crap, like he's in he is in a lot of trouble. He doesn't he never asks that for that sort of you know he's never in that sort of situation. I need to go and help him out. And there is that emotion there, but then for me the first thing is I'll gonna give him a call. I'm gonna talk to him first and then see see what the situation is and it turns out his phone had been hacked so i mean like now that's just one example that's that's not that's not to say it's, it's it should be that straightforward for everyone and they should all be out of work yeah i think the exception with you is that you actually investigated and made sure that it was him like you called him yeah, yeah. whereas like and these kind of scams that some people are going to be a little bit too over emotional yeah, like uh, the, the those sort of things through, and then just gonna go right. Okay, yeah, like here, let me let me send you money. Yeah, like, yeah. The point of these kind of scams is to like you know they know that ninety nine percent of people aren't going to fall for them, so they aim for the one percent of people who don't who do fall for them. Like, which it, is a it's lot. like the guys. It's like the guys that date not women for years online. What? Right? They think they're talking to a girl, but they're not. They're just talking Cat to fishing. a guy trying to steal Cat, their money. Yeah, Catfishing. Yeah. Cat yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It, mm. It's just it, it's 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 like that, right? It's it's well, getting it, the it right can... global people that won't look into it. Well, I mean, Dude, I, I think AI voice now. can be if used. If you throw it at a million to... people, not it's not going to be zero people that fall for it, right? Yeah, and I mean, you know, AI voices really are. A, a different way of doing something that humans have always been doing. Like Crafty oh, said, yeah. like humans oh, have yeah. always been scamming people with snake oil salesman tactics to like the internet phishing stuff. You know, oh, people yeah. still fall for phishing emails. Um, yeah, they do. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, this is the kind of the same kind of stuff, but done using a new technology. And I feel like to restrict the use of the technology itself is irresponsible. Yeah. Because you, Scammers are still always going to try to always going to find ways around it. Yeah, and, and impersonation is illegal, anyways. Like defamation is illegal. Like you can't impersonate a political figure and then have them lie about stuff. Like that's already illegal in the yeah, U.S. At least. Yeah, it's already like if you if you're trying to push a political agenda and you're pretending to be like, oh, hey, it's me, I'm it's me, I'm Donald Trump. No, no, you're not. You could you could you could you can get in trouble for that. You can get in trouble yeah. for that. Like if but, I like if I made an AI voice of Trump saying that he was pro abortion, you know, and then people actually believe that he could sue me for libel because obviously he's well, not if you're, pro if that. You're, if you're trying to if you're trying to portray and you're not and you're not you give no hints as to you're not him, right? And then, then that's obviously like fucked up, right? <laughs> yeah, that that's the difference um, between I feel like intentional defamation and parody. But, yeah, yeah, if if 
Well, if we have, if we start banning the like the stuff that anyone can use, then the guys are the the people who want to use it for ill. That they will eventually get those, you know, closed source things you can just download on your computer things, and then have unrestricted access, right? Yeah, and exactly. They'll, like, they'll the be the only ones that can bottle. do what they want. Yeah, the yeah, genie's out of the bottle. Like, yeah, the we, technology we exists. Need to figure out how to how to work with this well so youtube obviously brought in something not too long ago where it you had to disclaim in your like in like it was like in the description there's like a box in there when you go to upload there's a bit about there about whether you know this is like ai uh technology like if it's like imagery or voices there's, there's something like that's already been brought in um so there's there's there's, there's there is something being brought in self-identification place. yeah it's, it's bringing it in place. that's good um and i think that's that's the right sort of way of going about it um that's make, good making people bring an awareness to it is a good thing as well and again that you shouldn't hold back on advancing technology but at the same time you obviously do have to understand that there are always going to be those that are going to abuse it for nefarious reasons and i think creating awareness is is the key to helping people tackle that sort of situation if they were to come across it so again you are going to get people that are going to fall for the ai voices but you'd like to think that hopefully as time goes on that number is going to get smaller or at least more people will be aware of it and will be able to counter it and again there'll be you might be able to get things like uh, you've got if you've got insurance for instance it's like again if you get scammed out of like money there there can be ways of getting that money back depending on like the situation and stuff it's going to be a bit messy every time that we ever get an advancement in anything you are like i said you're always going to find someone who's going to take advantage of it but as time goes on things become clearer things become easier and it'll be one of, it'll be a thing of the past we'll have the same conversation in 10 years time it would be like oh do you remember back when people used to use ai voices to... remember when people would actually get fooled by ai voices yeah, exactly. that's crazy now we got android <laughs> remember when vine was a thing <laughs> My yeah, neighbor's that, a full robot. I I can't whenever, even tell anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whenever something new comes around, there's always a, a pool of victims, and that's pretty unavoidable. A, a pool of uh, initial like ground zero victims. Yeah, it, it's like it's like banning video games because a few hundred thousand people get so addicted that they like ex that they just don't do anything else. There's like just, you know, you know the technology yeah. can be harmful when applied in a certain way. Which is why I think that in order to combat bad actors, I honestly think that governments around the world need to expand their legal infrastructures and law enforcement infrastructures to actually combat bad actors so they those people can get arrested and caught pretty much the same day they commit the crime. Like I feel like if there's going to be evolution on that front, it needs to be within like the actual law enforcement mechanisms to my, my like, take out like bad people. Are you uh, announcing your candidacy the evening of the election? Oh, God, That's no. quite the policy. <laughs> no, it is. No, no, my presidential policy is a universal pre -K. My My presidential policy is universal pre-K and kindergarten. It, yeah, universal pre-K and daycare. That's mine. <laughs> so, um, going on to... Keeping on with Eleven Labs and looking at, like, how we're going about mm dealing with it um now obviously uh i imagine people listening if you've been catching up on any of my uploads you'll know that i've taken a step back for the time being um with regards to the uh, D, &D uh, series at the moment i'm just waiting to find out what's going on with 11 labs i'm not holding my breath on it but i am going to also start looking into alternative sites um I'd like to go around the table and just see like how you guys are dealing with the situation, what your alternatives you, uh, you're going for, what sort of steps you've been taking uh, place, and how this has sort of affected you now, like going forward with like video production. And uh, I'd like to start with Malafrex because uh, I feel like I think I can't obviously see the viewers at the moment, but I imagine a few of them are saying, "Why isn't Malafrex talking?" So let's get let's get some words from him. Okay. Hey. Um, yeah, so I am using Play HT now. Um, right as I came back, I did resubscribe to Eleven Labs, and I think I generated like three or four lines with each of my president's voices before they also got banned. Um, and so, yeah, I I feel like with Play HT, um, I feel like it's just like almost there, but 
it's just not quite out of the box what Eleven Labs offers. Um, there's just so much more you have to tweak on every single voice to get it to where it's consistently generating the types of things you want to generate. And I feel like with um, the emotion of Play HT, I do think that you can get emotion, but I think that it requires... I, I feel like Eleven Labs did a lot better job of scanning the text and choosing appropriate emotions. Like, if you have a lot of exclamation marks, your character might sound angrier or more excited, depending on what the text was, and I feel like that's not there for Play HT. Um, but it has, Play HT has improved my workflow by, it's cut several hours off my workflow with some of their API and automation options, um, which I'm a big fan of. I don't think I'm going to go back to Eleven Labs, even if they do cut the bands. Um, but yeah, it is harder to work with the voices on play HT. I would say what's the, so you, you mentioned API and it's, it's, it's been able to be really useful for you to like actually, it, you said knock several hours off. And I imagine this has obviously contributed to your regular uploading uh, schedule, which you've been holding on to, which by the way, um, absolutely fantastic. Very glad. Hannah already said it before. Welcome back again. Uh, mate you have been missed and it's 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 fantastic i was i was sort of expecting that it was going to be just like a single episode and then maybe something then in about like a month's time or something so it's been fantastic you've been keeping up with such a regular one would you say that this what play ht is doing with api and i'd like you to sort of elaborate what api is in a sec you do say that's been like a fundamental uh like thing that has helped uh keep you on a on a regular schedule um, I, I would say it's definitely contributed to it a lot, yeah. Um, so the API, I wrote up a, a pretty simple Python script that just lets me... I am a software engineer by trade, so... Um, and so I wrote up a simple script that lets me just hit a single button and it will generate the voices for the entire script. Um, it does take about half an hour to run, but it runs automatically, so I don't have to sit there, copy, paste, download. Um, after it generates, it just goes through the entire script generating everything, which is really awesome. Um, I know Eleven Labs does have a similar API, I think. I just never was able to get it to work. Um, but yeah, it, it, PlayHT's API is definitely yeah revamped and allowed me to make videos where I feel a lot more comfortable being on a regular posting schedule for my videos. That's amazing. I'll tell you, when, um, when we're, we're finished the podcast, I'd love it if you could... Uh, send me some inf more information about that because I <laughs> how I've always done my voices I, I literally have done them one person at a time like as the conversation plays out and it's probably one of the reasons why it, it takes as long as it has done for me in the past like to to get these videos going so something like what you've got going on there would be a massive massive help just it yeah, sucks it has to be for play script? HT but there it is Crafty yeah, just so the exact same thing you do yeah, thing. so... Uh, Sorry, like, oh. you, you, you carry on. Yeah, I'm just asking a quick question. Do you write a script, Crafty? Like, you write it all down beforehand, or do you just, like, go with the flow? Like, I you have, you do one thing at a time. I have the script in my head. I know okay. what I want. Oh, my goodness. I you, you have, you have trouble writing do. it down. You have trouble writing it down. I will write I, it I get down, it. but the problem will be I will write it down, and then I will change it ten times. Right. I, I work right, a lot I get more it. on improv. I know what yeah. I want to sort of happen. The roll of the dice will obviously help influence what goes on, but I don't. Technically, I don't write a script ever. You've got that DM mind. Damn, yes. that, that's yeah. impressive. That I, I impressive. can't imagine doing any of this kind of work without writing a script, and then while I'm transcribing everything, I then edit the lines as needed. Like so, for example, like some lines might just not come out as well when read aloud versus read in my head, for example. Okay. So, like, that that's the most amount of improv, like, script stuff I'll be doing. You know, I, I'm writing this stuff down because I do not want to go in blind. I don't know. That's that's just different minds, I guess. Yeah, Malathrex's uh, thing he does is if you write down a full uh, script, I believe, right? All right. If yep. you write it yeah, all down, right. And then it'll automate fully, like copy paste everything, and then you know do all everything else. I'm I'm oh willing God. to give it a try. You know, I mean, always gonna try. I can always I'm always up for trying something at least once. So I'm if it's something that could help overall production of a video, like dramatically cut down in time, 
I got no problem with giving it a go. I'll write a script. It'll probably be dog piss, but I'll give it a go just to see how, uh, how it comes out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's an open invitation to anybody who does President AI content. If you don't watch this script, uh, we could get it working on your computer in about 10, 15 minutes at the most. Uh, you do have to write out your script beforehand, but then you'll be able to just click a button and it will go through and generate all your voices for you. Put our movie script in so we can put it in the data script. Two two uses of the word script there. Yes. Yeah. And, Thank you. Uh, yep. And then we'll just need uh, bank details to transfer the funds. Uh, for, yeah, we're gonna need those three little numbers. What's your mother's back? maiden name? As I get to know you guys, hey, I just name, want what was the name the of your first four social securities, please? <laughs> this is the last four your digits of your credit name? card. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Who was your first <laughs> school? Where, where was your first school? So that was, uh, so there's, there's a really good uh, bit of info there for Mal. Um, uh, Aura, how, how about yourself, matey? Because I know you've obviously had a bit of a knock with your channel. You haven't been able to do uploads recently, ever since, I think, since yeah. the, the new ban is. So how, so obviously, we obviously know then the first bit that's obviously affected is it's it's pretty much stopped your uploads at the moment. But how have you looked in, what have you looked into like to try to work around this? So it was really kicking me while I was down because uh, th this is going to sound silly, but you know how like you have a uh, subscription to a service and then something like Rocket Money, you know, you can come in and, and you can end the subscription. I've had 11 labs for like uh, almost two years and I would just use it like uh, to spoof some of my own friends with like uh, friends in our circles voices. And, and I would just had generally had a good time with it and, and everything and and so I, I i used it for ben shapiro and gordon ramsay and a lot of the other uh npcs at first and i uh, uh when i decided to start creating i i went with play ht to do the presidents and then i really dug in deep to uh and this is something that doesn't really come very naturally to me but i went into I, I I got uh, uh, the pitched up voices and, you know, I'd go back through and I had just figured it out and I deleted my Play HT account and I just moved entirely over to 11 labs. And just when that happened and I got out my last video, that's whenever the bands came and I just was, I, you know, uh, utterly defeated. Yeah, it, was, it was rough. Yeah. yeah, like a giant hole just opened up in my stomach after my Kamala voice got banned, and I was like, "No." Well, I got a hole. In my I was like, "No." So, I... yeah, uh, no, that's for different, thing. different when, when I realized that my dungeon master's voice was gone, it's just damn. It, it it was it was like a a pit just opened up, and I just I, it was devastating. Like, yeah, it, so it's, it's emotionally hard. About, it was just I lost I lost my DM, and that was just he was my favorite voice. Yeah, and, it, and so I went ahead and I emailed um, Eleven Labs, and I you know showed them the start. You know, almost almost like two years of of, of using them pretty much ever since they got out, and I've been giving them like the twenty two dollars a month. And um, you know, I just said that I'm not going to come back, and uh, not that they would notice me. I'm probably dropping the bucket, but just the principle of it is that I agreed to a product uh and and uh you know that the, they make you update the terms and 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 conditions and i just i just refuse to do it I, I i uh just deleted them yesterday before my subscription came up today and and uh i'm very interested in what malathrax is talking about because i, I i'm a total script writer you know I, I love to read and and write and and uh if i could just plug it in and save myself you know a lot of work and and that tremendous headache, I am all in, brother. I will be putting out content the same rate that I started, which was every couple of days. If yeah. I could do it just like that. Uh, Bruce, yeah, did, well, did Eleven Labs ever respond back to you, like with with your emails? No, no. And so, you know, I did the reasonable thing and started to send them pieces of my hair and blood in the mail and dead animals. And, and so far, nothing. <laughs> oh, jeez. And so far, nothing. They're not getting back to me. Why? Not even a toenail. I know. It's it, it's uh, it's a really one-sided love affair. So I think but this yeah, is where uh, it ends. And uh, this cowboy checks out. It's yeah, that old dusty a... trail on over to play HT Canyon. <laughs> there there are a lot of people... I've heard say, 
even if they lift the bands now, I'm not going back. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, no, and, and yeah. they've completely screwed themselves because I think they're right. contribute. I've, I've got no way of, of telling. I don't know if there's anyone out there who could who could be able to come in and tell us. But I imagine the majority of their subscriptions has come from content creators. Like it must have been, it, was, it would have been content creators that like got their name as big as it was in the first place. You know, it drew more people to them because they would have heard the, they would have heard these channels' voices and gone, "Oh, that sounds brilliant." Who did you use? And I'd see it. I'd look at everyone's like like videos in their comment section, and you always had people right at the early starters like, "Where did you get your voices from? How did you do your voices? Is it paid actors?" Blah 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 blah. And then obviously people over time started answering and said, "Oh no, it was Eleven Labs." So word got out, it spread around. Then more people were being influenced and going, "Oh yeah, no, I want to make a channel now. I could use that." And they got bigger and bigger and bigger. And obviously, I think that led to one of the one of the reasons why they they. They got they got so big they got noticed a little bit uh, by the wrong people maybe and then they're sort of like right now you need to be quiet. And sort of shut down. Yeah, they certainly cut their 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 teeth on 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 this business and 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 it was amazing advertising because you know now that we're more of a genre if we really harken back to the days that it first started and I even put out a video then if you want to you know check out my channel anybody who's listening um <laughs> there is a and uh it, there's an incredible boom i mean you know you guys were created like you malathrax clone studios uh you know as far as the dnd content goes it was it was trending everywhere you know if anybody made even a low effort video it would be getting thousands of views so that's you know, yeah. if, if if you want to talk about the funneling of adver of advertising for them, of of people realizing what that is, you know, that's that's uh, amazing. You know, that's yeah, for that's, that's free money. For a decent bit of time there, like you said, you could upload a pretty lukewarm video, and it could get hundreds of thousands, if not yeah. millions, of views. Yeah, yeah. it was kind of crazy, crazy how big it was. Yeah, I yeah, really I, wish I, I, I think... knew now what I knew then because I, <laughs> I oh my god, I would, I'd be I'd be oh, raking in. <laughs> I, I think we can get back to that. I, I, I think I someday people will be coming back to that. They will be looking for quality content though. Why people like AI like the AI vo character scene? Not even just AI president. AI characters is it's just getting started, you know. Yeah, There's, right. Um, Being able to getting the ability to make like you know cinematic universes of characters and stuff like that. We're not cinematic, but you know universes with characters. Yeah, it, it's. So, so I guess uh, it's only become more and more prevalent. My closing remark is uh, uh, Marty uh, Stanishevsky, CEO of Eleven Lamps. Uh, you know, get to doing some work. You know, there's a <laughs> there's still quite a big market share for. For uh, us online work. weirdos, you know, we're we're we can we can put some dollars in your pocket. Either that, or I'm going to continue to send uh, send you dead animals in the mail. All right, that's that's all that's all Aurora AI, uh, you know. We'll use your all, competitor, and when they get pictures. better, we'll use them more. Yeah, so, that is yeah, the that's, appropriate that's thing to say. That's probably more effective, Ash. That's <laughs> probably more effective than uh, what I just said. Uh, so uh, uh, probably. Yeah. Uh, now I believe you. It wasn't too long ago actually. Your most recent upload has come up, but you didn't actually use Eleven Labs. Is that right? Yeah, I never got a chance to use Eleven Labs. As far as the presidents go, I do use them for the NPC. Like Mayor and Catalina are Eleven Labs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so you would you say then that well, this not really affected you as as such? I take it you 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 use Play HD, do you? Kind of like it was one of those things where I, everybody in the in the Discord was starting to talk about how like audacity pitch shifting and all that, and I was like, okay, I want to give it a try, especially because like why not? It seems a lot easier than writing line per line. Mm -hmm. But I mean, then everything hit, and it's just like I I don't really see a point to it. I mean, if anything, I I I'm probably gonna do the five dollar thing just because of Mayor and Catalina, and I I like their library for the basic NPCs. Yes. But that's literally about it. And since they don't have that many lines, I don't ever see me needing to spend a lot of money on them. The Play HT, though, I would definitely love to be able to pay for that. Like the um, more voices, because right now, free trials over and over. <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, using free trials of Play HT on Mozilla, Edge, and Chrome. Yeah, that's, that's the strat. <laughs> yep. Really? Couldn't you for for so the mayor's voice? Couldn't you use eleven dollars? Like, no, there, like, there is a way around it. 
you yeah there is a way re- so like recycling the, the the free trial yeah and you have to use uh, and you have and you have to use different internet browsers to use multiple accounts at the same time wait wait wait. why do you have to use multiple accounts though because i keep seeing like another person Multi- also asked oh multiple you can browsers claim so. all the voices onto that same trial even though it only gives you access to one i have eight voices claimed it, it's fine it's just what you do is you when you make the voice you like go to your library and then you're gonna share it you're gonna right click it click share i send them to a buddy here on discord so anytime i make a new trial i just go on his discord click all of them and then claim them all on the browser and then i go like refresh play hc on the new trial and boom there they are by the way you if just... anyone's listening from play hc we're totally kidding D- uh don't take <laughs> anything you're saying seriously we only do this in minecraft <laughs> yeah, only in Minecraft. <laughs> I did not know that this was a. Th- yeah, this is. I didn't know this was a kept secret because, like, there's like most people who've been saying that, and I'm like, I don't know how to explain this, but you, you can, you can just put them all. But like, they're in Meltran's video. He he shows you how to do it too. Uh, this is where we find out now we're the downfall of uh, of Dude. people being able to use Play HT. <laughs> that would be terrible. Darn. Well, go be famous or something. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make any voices though. So like. Yeah, it's just it's just that like you can't make any voices. You you will have to make multiple accounts to make more. And I did, but like again, then I just shared the voices. And then Mel like yeah. But, so yeah. you can use all the shared voices on your own account like as mm-hmm. many as you want. You just yeah, can you just only to... make one voice with one account. Yeah, and then if you ever claim them, like let's say you start a free trial and then you claim the voices, you can't make that one free voice they give you. You can't do it cuz you essentially did by claiming the ones, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I, I I've just it. been playing around with, like, you know, how to access it and all that, and I was just like, oh, okay, well, let's see, and yeah. Those are just the little small workarounds I found, just to keep, you like, know, the thing going. Yeah, I always ignored that share button. That's what it does, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, like, you don't have to keep making the voices over and over. You can consistently keep using the exact same ones over and over. Okay. Well, isn't that but, uh, funny? Yeah. We'll talk, yeah. Mecha King. Uh, you may have to speak slow for me. You know, hey. I come from that part of the country. Sorry, man. I'm, 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 uh, I'm just, I'm just a little bit nervous. But like, yeah. no, no, yeah. no, no. I mean, no, no. You're talking fine. I'm, I just listen dumb. There's a big we gotta, difference. We gotta put your voice on point oh eight x. Ooh, that's fair, actually. And so, um... I have 168 voices cloned right now. Whoa. Oh my Whoa. god! Whoa. How many? How many? Uh, woohoo! <laughs> Who they're are you cloning? They're, they're various different variations, you know? Oh, okay, that makes oh, sense. Oh, that's like, how you like, get voice that. Testing. So there's like a I've always wondered how you happy. got that. Yeah, voice they sound testing. so out there. So you do you do that? I gotta know. I gotta know before we move on. No, uh, you right. box. Are, are <laughs> you doing know. it on the free? Are you doing it on the free? No, I paid for the 3 and 48. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it's like, because that over and over again, that would be... Although uh, to yeah, use Maltrax so. API, I I absolutely will pay because the the idea of saving that much time, I'm like, huh, okay, yeah, because that is a huge part. Yeah, I multitask and I'm generating art at the same time, which does take up a majority, but still, just any time saved, I mean, like, yeah, because um, because I have a bunch of scripts, a yes. bunch of scripts, but not a lot of free time. So yeah, yeah. The great what the API? A new spawn of video. Oh that yeah. Erupts. <laughs> I, but, I, yeah, I feel I'm... like just I, I don't know if I'd like using that because I like to just tweak every single line. So I'm wondering if there's a way to like tweak different lines in case uh, there's some that I really don't like the delivery of. Like, does the API allow or does the script allow that for that kind of stuff? I would have thought you would just give me till this weekend. Way. And yes, give me till this weekend. So I'm I'm doing a big upgrade with uh, the RPG mechanic at the moment. Yeah. So yeah, my the application that. Right now, it's really simple. You just click a button, um, and it generates the whole script. I'm making a lot of changes. Um, that should be done by this weekend, I think. And it will... Um, so you, you'll be able to generate the entire script, and then you can go back to specific lines and regenerate those audios oh my um, God. a lot easier. So that's coming. For this, though, you do have to subscribe to Play HT's uh, hacker tier, which is $5 a month. And then it stacks on top of any other character. So five hundred dollars a month? Five. Five dollars. Oh my bad. I thought I heard five hundred, my bad. <laughs> no. Nope. Okay, five sounds good. If it was five hundred, yeah, this this app would not be in existence. So. <laughs> <sighs> 
<laughs> I knew the subscription tiers were kind of high, so I was like, "You, you would need to be making some of that good ad money, man." <laughs> uh huh. Man. Uh, so, Ashen. So, yes. Uh, what sort of uh, workarounds have you uh, been uh, trying to do to get work on your videos? Where have videos been going on? Because obviously, so, you've lost a majority of your voices now. Yeah, a majority of them were lost. Um, Kamala's got lost in April, but in between, like. In between like March and of 2023 and March of 2024, I didn't really have any voices lost. Like, so I did get my Biden voice removed, and then instinctively, because I was afraid that Eleven Labs would ban my account if I kept my Obama and Trump ones, I deleted those just out of fear that they would act badly. And then um, after I had done all the lines for Women Politicians 4 and some for 5 is when I got my Kamala 1 band. So that's when I subscribed to Play HT. And that was going good for a while. Uh, I literally only needed to use Play HT for my Kamala voice. The rest of the voices on Eleven Labs were fine. It wasn't until like this summer when I was working on transcribing what I had written for Women Politicians 6 that my... Uh, Elizabeth Warren and um, uh, AOC voices got banned. And in case you're wondering why there's such a long production time between May of this year and now is because just uh, life stuff. Um, I, I really can't really blame Eleven Labs for my content not coming out when it should have. That's more of just a me problem. Mm -hmm. But um, Play HT has basically like saved my movies from going extinct because... Like, it, it is the only viable alternative out there, if I'm correct. Well, and you guys so, watched my video, right? Well, I think so. Yeah, I watched yours. Um, But yeah, okay. it's... Yeah, I'm probably going to, like, experiment around with different ones. But the issues I've been having with PlayHT at the moment, and thank goodness I got all my lines transcribed, um, is that it just runs slower. It's not as good a software. It has less variation in how the voices can sound. And so I felt like I need to generate way more versions. With Eleven Labs, I've also needed to generate a lot of like different versions of the speeches. But the variations in those lines is so much wider than it is in PlayHT. Like, you could generate 10 different Eleven Labs lines... And you'll probably get 10 with the same settings with the same settings. Yes, exactly. And you'll yeah. get 10 distinct results. Whereas with play HT, the results are a lot more restrictive. They're a lot more limited. Um, I think that if play HT had like a timer slider rather than a, just a straight timer, I think that would go. Uh, I think that would do a lot for how much variation your lines can have in that. Because I feel like just if they open themselves up to more randomization in the emotions, that could help play HT get above Eleven Labs. Because right now Eleven Labs just excels in the emotion, and the chance that you get a good emotional take is like maybe one in five. Once you do get that one, it's like really good. Um, and so to your point, um, for Woman Politician Seven, the lack of Eleven Labs is definitely going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm just not going to be able to use that aside from my Marianne, Marge, and Skelga. Because Lone Boba got banned, Kamala got banned, AOC and Warren got banned. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of... I I'm a sad boy on that. Yeah. But we'll, 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 we'll make it work. I'll make it work. Um, I do have some content that will not use presidential voices, but may use some video game voices so uh Ooh. you know you can uh look forward to some of that they're still cloned from a certain game i'm not going to give any away but uh Dude, you know just uh... <laughs> okay, uh, i'm i'm starting to see a, f a like one uh, there's one channel that is coming into mind that i'll mention in a sec where uh like people are using voices other than like the presidents now obviously the the big one of the biggest channels is ai guy who uses only Trump, mm -hmm. as, as far as presidents, and then uses a uh, variation of like celebrities, which is really good. And I think it's quite, it's, it's, it's actually done very well for him, considering that he's only going to have to worry about dealing with Trump's voice, considering Eleven Labs did the switch around and unbanned all the rest. But there's like, mm -hmm. uh, there's one channel that's just recently been around um, AI uh, D&D &D campaign. There's two channels that, sat, that 
very similar uh, title, but this particular guy, he doesn't use any presidents. You've got. I've uh, seen that. You've seen this one, yeah. It's got Ryan yeah. Reynolds, Jack Black, Cat Williams. Uh, uses Is that the one of Peter Griffin? Griffin? Yeah, uses Peter Griffin as the DM. I'm in. That's I'm in. It. I didn't yeah, know Peter this. Dinklage. I'm in. It's, it's brilliant. I'm in. Yeah, it's really well. It's really well done. It's very funny. Voices hey, sound I love Peter. Very good. The voices are really good for it, and he's, he's got the humor on. It's like spot on, and it was quite nice to see like a different group of, of like characters being used. And yeah, I, and I can I've see... seen. Yeah, go on. Sorry, sorry. I I, I'm just, I just wanted to say before I forget, uh, I forget stuff. But I, I've seen people make videos with the cast uh, SpongeBob characters. Hmm. Like I, I've seen like them playing Mario Party, and I've also seen uh, Sonic characters. Oh yeah, yeah. They're like like uh, they basically did what President's Discord server did, but with Sonic characters. Yes, nice. Yeah, you see, I I think this is going to be good, and I I think that. If Eleven Labs obviously stick to their guns on what they're going to do, and Play HT it doesn't get a huge amount of improvement, also with the fact that there's like, I mean, just with the D and D alone, there's like twenty channels that do that use the presence voices, not including then obviously the what the fifty plus other channels are probably more. I mean, Uvox, I think you only covered fifty alone in your in your tier list. Video. Oh yeah, and there's so oh, many yeah. more. So many more. Like, I was looking at the comments in that video afterwards, and there's the so comments, many people I, I, just like, "What about this one? You forgot <laughs> him? How dare you forget them?" That's my video. Have that's my video with the Air most Force comments. Oh, yeah, that's, that's that's my video with the with the, with the most comments, and I'm not reading those comments. <laughs> I'm not reading. <laughs> <laughs> you should well, read the no, comment no, I no, left no. down there. He <laughs> he. What I'm getting at is that the the you know we we've got this this whole market. Of like of of channels that are all using like the effectively like the same to a degree like the same sort of people so it's quite nice and I think we're gonna we'll probably end up seeing more of this as time goes on more channels opening up and using a variation of like of different like celebrities and stuff oh yeah and I think this, yeah AI I think characters we're, we're, we're gonna get into the new era of like AI entertainment voices and I, I think we I think we're in store for some like some really good stuff like like coming out in the woodwork because there's, there's a lot of inspiration gets bounced around you know every time a new channel comes out they've been inspired by X Y and Z and it just it just keeps trickling out and more and more and again like you see some of these channels come in and they just the level of work they bring in and I look at that and I think fuck me it took me like six months to get to that sort of to for it to like my videos to look that good and this guy's like comes out on his first video and it just like looks very well polished and everything sounds great and it's just like yeah there's some really good stuff I think like on the horizon with all this yeah AI characters that's the future presidents was just the beginning oh yeah oh yeah yeah I think like, like you know as more creators come in with bringing in their different kinds of experiences, uh, like in VFX and SFX, just from whatever they've been doing prior to AI, D and D, you know, I think when you have artists who can bring those kind of skill sets into their videos, I think that's when you're really going to start seeing this genre really pop off. Yeah, oh, like 100%. like AI Senpai. He's he started with just the presidents, but now he has like seven completely original characters and he's made videos with just said original characters and they get views so even if theoretically he permanently lost all real life voices he would still be good yeah right he would still be good so that's that's like theoretically like what everyone should go for at some point yeah I was in, I, I cover mean, all your bases i mean go you know starting off it's like we're saying like obviously in the early days like the anyone who started making like president videos like they really took off and if they were consistent and they had good lengthy videos then you know they they would saw a mass like return coming onto it and oh yeah a lot of people yeah. now you can make one of these you can make one of these videos and just you only got to give it like a week or so and the videos they start climbing then they might not like get the sort of views that like maybe in the early days sort or of thing but you think about it, so many YouTube channels, there are millions of YouTube channels, they don't have single a single subscriber, they don't have mm -hmm. a single view on any of their videos, but you've got mateys that have been starting up, you know, couple, you know, we've got a few mateys here, obviously, you know, within a month, like you guys, you know, past the 100 mark, past the 200 mark, past the 300 mark, there's some channels, I've known, I've had mateys who, who ran channels before, it took them a year to get to like 300 subscribers 
you know and so it's it's amazing like the the draw for 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 for, like people want to see that sort of entertainment it's a great way to like to step into it and then if you wanted to like sort of expand it over time like you were just saying with um uh, senpai yeah and change it up and then maybe move it into the the sort of characters that you really want to use you know use use the presidents just as a stepping stone because that's that's yeah that's gonna get yeah, absolutely attention isn't it yeah use them as the, as the base and then go from there mm. no 100 percent yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. I, uh, oh, yeah. This My is uh, really good. Is... Oh, sorry. I, 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 was, I just wanted to say before I forget. Um, this is a really good. As I, I'm pretty sure you were alluding to, it, it's good. This is really good to um, a really good uh market, uh, niche, whatever, to um, get attraction on. You know what I mean? If you like, if you upload gaming content, you're probably not gonna get views. You you'll you'll be uploading for six months straight. You'll probably get like 30 views tops on some videos, right? Oh, yeah. If you if you upload here, you're gonna get you're gonna get traction. People are always looking for more. Yep. You're not wrong. Yeah. So you sure. could you can get a following in this. It's it's a lot easier than most genres, niches, markets, whatever. Yeah, I mean, of course, don't go into it for the following. Go into it because you like making these videos, and then yeah. the following oh yeah. Comes. yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> go in, go in, because you're gonna make it. That's not where I'm sort of getting at my point. Yeah, it, because of how popular this sort of genre is, it's just it's such a boost, like for a new channel. It's, it's something that you just don't see in practically any other type of channel. Like oh yeah, you know, I, I'd I'd seen like stats. I I posted a link to some of you guys before about it. There's like um someone looked into like youtube statistics and it's like if you're getting like a thousand views on a video you're in like the top like 15 like 10 percent or whatever of youtubers because yeah. the mass majority are barely getting like 10 views and yeah, it's you're crazy. part of the elite yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I i did have a youtube channel for like a year and I had it with three of my friends, and we did upload like actually hilarious stuff. You know, it was three me mm -hmm. and three friends together. We're 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 just being hilarious the whole time. We got like thirty subs over the course of a year. Yeah, I, I had like one. gaming just doesn't get it. Yeah, I, I had one before. I had uh, this one. It was exactly the same name, but um, it was Sea of Thieves content, um, mm -hmm. Minecraft. You're a pirate. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it was Minecraft. I made a lot of like comedy sketches using those games. So like I just used mm -hmm. like the the emotes and stuff like that, and built like little stories and that sort of thing. Those videos. You made little machinimas. <laughs> Mate, if I got if I got like sixty views in a month, I was ecstatic. I was like, yes, that was a fat people dub. Are watching. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. It, 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 the channel. Killed the channel off after about two years. It ended at like 303 subs, and I was satisfied. I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. But I, I, I sort of got, I had a bit of burnout, I think, at that point, uh, but which we'll get to burnout in a minute. But then I took a break, and then eventually I came back into it and just thought, yeah, I'll give it another go. And then the president thing came up, and it just went boom. And I was like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people dipped their toes in, and then they stuck mm -hmm. around and just did that. Yeah. You know, like Clone and Crucial and um, Presidential AI, I know he did that. There's a lot of people that just stuck with this. Oh, yeah. But, um, uh, right, has anybody got uh, any other things that they want to mention about with Eleven Labs? Like any, maybe, like, tips for, for people? Or maybe it doesn't even have to be so uh, Eleven well Labs. Check out oh, my video boy. on it. Honestly, I, I I'm trying to help as many people as possible get to make yeah. content. Should check out his video because I watched yours. It was informative. Or check out Melchatron's. Both of y'all together, honestly, should be more than enough info. Because like, I hope Melchatron so. Like, you started, I'm trying to get people creating good content. The, yeah, because you got into the real nitty gritty. Like like I said, Melchatron is like a good starter because it it gets you started with what you need. And then you got into the whole explanation, specifically on Plage C, which people need to like hear because it is definitely daunting and definitely not user friendly. But like, hey, don't let it stop you. Like, make the content because like like I said, we that's need more. why I haven't. Yeah, yeah, make more. Get out there, and make good content, and that's why I haven't recommended play just because it's kind of. It's more difficult than Eleven Labs to use. That's why it's been yeah. hard for me to recommend it to people. But you know what? I made that video and I made it clear when I swap voices. And you know, you can choose. You can do parrot. You can do play. 
You could do Vox Box. You could do other options. Mm-hmm. That's right. I'm I just, what I, saying. Yeah, I mean, I'm just hoping that, like, you know, in the best of worlds, we'd be able to register ourselves as, like, parody content creators. That'd be where great. Eleven Labs could maybe look at our videos and say, hey, this guy's a parody artist, not somebody who's trying to trick people. We're going to let him use the voice. You know, I, I, I consider yeah. just the use of an AI voice the equivalent of having a perfect impersonator on SNL. Just like right. the, the idea mm-hmm. is kind of the same. It's just the ease of use and the ease at which you're able to get their voice is yeah, kind the- of like it's improved. But like the like if you're able to get, say, like a Kamala Harris person who looks exactly like her and sounds exactly like her to the point where people could confuse her as her, it's still illegal to impersonate her, you know, like in a serious official setting, you know. And so I feel like if we apply the same standards that we have to AI voices as we do to other, like, means of parody, things would be a lot better. Hi. Hi, that's nicely put, put there on that one. So, um, I think then we might be wrapping up uh, the subject on Eleven Labs. And so let's move on to subject number two. So I mentioned it very briefly at the beginning. Um, content creator burnout. Now, this is something that I have personally experienced on some degree, uh, mostly in my first in my first channel. Um, a little with uh, the current channel, only in respect of when I lost my DM voice. It then, at that point, I felt burnt out. I felt like I had just sort of hit sort of my uh, hit hit a roadblock as it were and it was I didn't have much of a fight left just to carry on at that point so I thought well I'm not going to quit but I am going to take a step back um, anyone else here have any uh, experience with burnout or maybe they know of channels or maybe they're, uh, they're friends with people who have channels that have had experience with it I, yeah. I'd like to hear from Malthrax on that. Yeah, I was going to say, let's have Malthrax like the moment that everybody's been waiting <laughs> oh my for. God. This is the climax of the podcast. That's really and... weird that we all have the same idea. What? Yes. Because <laughs> well, we all missed him, let's be real. Yeah, well, we, we missed should him. talk about your own burnout and then... Bro's taking Malthrax. a bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I don't know if burnout really describes what I, what happened with the channel for me. Um, I, I feel like, yeah, writer's block has definitely been something that I've just really struggled with. And I feel like with the, like I have two really long running series. Well, the D&D one's the longest running. And then I made a Call of Cthulhu movie. And then, yeah, I just hit a wall where I just couldn't like keep writing on those stories. And I still haven't, like I've rewritten the second Call of Cthulhu movie on my channel probably like six or seven times at this point and it's just still damn yeah, pick I just one can't get into it yeah so yeah I, I do think there was definitely some burnout for sure um like especially when i was when i first came out and i was doing a different ep- a new episode every single day that was unsustainable in the long run for sure and so i think what i learned from that is definitely just finding a pattern that works for you right and even if that is one video every three or four months or it's one video a week or what i'm doing right now seems to be working great for me so far where it's mondays wednesdays fridays but i think that that's just what works for me personally with my writing style and with my pretty minimal video creation i i was about to say how long in it how far in advance did you make these videos and so like how i guess what i'm asking you is like how long before you upload the videos did you actually like finalize and finish it? Um, so when I first came back, I had finished the script for the first two when the first one went live. Um, and so I wasn't too far ahead. But um, right now I have all of this week's done and I just uploaded as a private video all of next week's videos as well. So right now I'm two weeks ahead on mine. Nice. That's the Look way to that, do people. it. You got two weeks of content. We coming. are not Woo! worthy. You we are back. not <laughs> worthy. Um, but again, like that's just something that like has really worked well for me for 
the past couple of weeks. I, I could definitely see in the future I might have to tone it back and maybe just do two uploads a week. Um, but yeah, I feel like the main thing for content creators is just really finding the groove that works for you for producing your videos. 100% right. 100% on that one. Yeah. And then sticking with that group too, because you can very easily get thrown off of it if you're not careful. And, yeah. and don't do deadlines to yourself, at least publicly, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Deadlines are the worst. Never <laughs> set a deadline publicly. <laughs> like set them, yep. set them to yourself. Tell your friends. Tell tell someone, but don't po don't make the yeah. post. Don't do it. <laughs> nope. see, uh, <laughs> I, I, see, that was my mistake. You know, there was a little real world event and some jokes in my newest one that I wanted to have time to whiff before the election, but that's not going to happen. Turns out, editing, turns out, up exploiting a video that's about an hour long, fifty minutes of which is like battle scene. Turns out that takes a lot longer to exploit than it, my other videos did. Yeah. Um. Uh, so yeah, that was my mistake, and then I realized, oh wait, I gotta follow some stuff up. So I'm just now I have an official deadline of the night for my newest one. And I I'm think going it'll to still land though. Like despite what happens, I think they'll still land honestly, because like. You, well, you, you, you make short... some good jokes. I'm not gonna lie. Like I don't know, because I'm really bad at that kind of writing. So it's <laughs> like, no, it's I. I think I think it's gonna be fine, even if it's a little bit late. I think it's. Thank still you. Be good. Just yeah. gotta throw in enough word every three seconds, and that'll keep them laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that be the case though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh... it's it's very funny. The reason I started really using the swear words in my videos was because. They just got way more emotive with the swear words in them. Like they would sound way more angry. Way they would get louder. And yeah, more it's a trigger. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a trigger. Just add "fuck" to the beginning or end of, of something. Uh, and they'll, yeah, they'll exactly. Sound a lot angrier. Yes, they or, do, or and that's passionate. that was the big impetus behind why I just kept using it. Also for shock value and the fact that I have the uh, a sense of humor of a five year old who just uh. <laughs> swears and like all all those fun jokes. But yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I can't put cussing in it at all because, uh, you know, little ears and, and, uh, you know, if I in, intend on still making them in the house and my wife likes to listen to it, I have to get, you know. Oh, yeah. If you, if you have like a rating system like, you know, PG, then that's different. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No, I get you. Um, I, I, I have the headphones so that way my kids can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, my daughter loves SpongeBob, and I don't know if you know who Glorb Worldwide is. <laughs> I can't listen to him out loud at all. Jeez, <laughs> oh, <laughs> he makes a uh, AI SpongeBob rap, and it's it's good, but it's not what a kid should hear. And right. she loves SpongeBob. <laughs> oh yeah, fab, fab, fab. shouldn't mix the words. <laughs> Yeah, if, if I had kids, then I'd be more careful about what I write, but I don't, so I'm not careful at all. Oh, I know. <laughs> <I'm listening. laughs> and they have two out there. So I had practice before mine came out working at a school, so I got used to not cussing all the time. It 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 took a while, but boom. I cuss a fucking lot. Really? I I um worked <laughs> You with, don't say I worked as a school photographer <laughs> for the past couple of months and uh you're not allowed to cuss as it turns out. No, I didn't cuss in front of them, but that uh <laughs> It, it, it's weird being around children when you haven't been around them for so long because like you know i'm kind of just an indoor cat and then when i'm getting a job that has like me going to like elementary school after elementary school it feels so weird because i'm like getting flashbacks to my childhood like the cafeterias and the classrooms sorry i'm off topic <laughs> <laughs> yes we were uh, discussing burnout so yes uh, matter fricks you thank you very much for giving us a bit of a uh, bit of insight as, uh, of course. Yep. Yeah, that. Um, anybody else got uh, any kind of experience with burnout they want to they want to bring forward? I do. It's. Does anyone else want to go before I go? I guess. I mean, I really think it matters. Go ahead, man. Oh yeah, go yeah, sure. It. Um, so I guess with me, it's sort of a combination of feeling burnt out, but also just with a bunch of mental health stuff in addition, like. At the time I was working on Women Politicians 3, I was in an office job that I could not stand but felt like I couldn't really escape from because it was the highest paying job that I had gotten so far. Right. And it just mental health stuff after procrastination, after addiction stuff. Crafty and I talked about that on his podcast yep. about a year ago. Still issues with that, but neither but um 
And so just personal issues and life issues really got in the way of me making as much content as I wanted to make. So then when the Eleven Labs bands finally did hit, I was really kicking myself because, you know, I, I had the golden opportunity to make more content, but now it's kind of just like, you know, it, it was an opportunity and I kind of just let it slide out of my hands, which is, you know, and then, you know, I just got to roll with the punches, you know, move on, you know, like it, it happens. Once I release Women Politicians 6, I'm going to have to find a new thing a uh, new site but it'll be it'll be all right uh you know just i feel like you know when it comes to being a content creator especially when you're doing it by yourself without a with like when you're relying on another str like stream of income it y the scheduling and consistency have been the biggest benefits to what i've been doing like working on a project consistently and setting out maybe like a couple hours a day not even that like it could be even just an hour a day to work on them just to like keep up the like routine of doing it is basically how i've been able to make movies at this like as much as i have been and that has not been a lot like um i mean i i also do a lot of sound edits like you know today i was just finalizing up the footstep sounds and then i realized oh wait my fireballs sound way too loud and my magic spells are too quiet and this person sounds super soft and then the next line down sounds super loud mm -hmm. and it, it's just a lot to t to focus in on and then just yeah just focusing in on all of that kind of stuff burns me out so much and then after every release, I just felt really burnt out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's definitely a real thing. It can last for a really long time, especially if you're also working and especially if you got other internal mental stuff going on. It, it, it's not fun, but it, I, I'm actually very grateful for this community to basically like, you know, I feel like out of anyone else, like you guys are the closest to getting that feeling i to understanding that yes I and you know just having this kind of like you know group network you know also being able to network with other uh content creators does not hurt with viewers either um so having this being able to talk about burnout and other stuff and like you know actually having people who understand i feel like is very nice um but yeah long story short Burnout combined with mental health stuff is not fun, and you gotta prioritize your own mental well-being before your release schedule. And if that means um, pushing your videos back a week, then you gotta push those videos back a week. Um, I think there was some guy at Nintendo who said that you can only release a product once for the first time, and I just kind of want to make sure that if I release something, it's gonna be the best that I can do at that time. And then, so if I need to push a release date back, then I'll push a release date back. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah that was really good mate uh, and to be honest thank you i, I feel like i rambled and no, it didn't no, make no, any fine. sense but no, 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 it <laughs> well, was me... making a lot of sense thank you let, let me let me just say one one rain it's not really at like that relevant to the current topic but audio really is an important thing to get right and it's good to get right right but it's really bad to get wrong, you know. Like if yes. someone gets audio, if someone gets audio wrong, it is a glaring issue. Like yes, if, it like is. If something is way too loud or something is way too quiet. Like not like setting your background music to be drowning out your characters and stuff like that. That's an important thing. You make sh like you want to make sure it doesn't do that. Exactly. Yeah, just and it's just such an unseen thing because when people when it's good sound design, people don't notice it. But if it's bad sound yeah. design, people notice it. Yeah, it can be tricky too. So it's it's a unsung hero, so to speak. Yeah, and so that's that's where a lot of my production time really goes in is just to making sure things sound okay. Yeah, so as smaller I see, things. So my, yeah. my biggest drawback with with audio is when I've listened back, like while editing. I've got my headphones on. Everything sounds fine. I can hear it all nice and clear. It, it, it sounds good. It, it works well. After I've uploaded it, I'll go and like I'll go and watch it with my wife. Like we'll sit down, pop it on the TV. Cause I always want to. I always want to know what her, what her reaction is to it. 
And then I'm listening, I'm sitting there listening, I'm like, this does not sound like how it did when I had my damn headphones on. And like, I used to keep having that as a, like, a running issue when it came to audio. And even when I thought I was getting a handle of it, there'd be times where, you know, someone would message on there and say, oh, you know, it's too, Trump's too quiet or, you know, Ben Shapiro's too loud. And it's just like, damn, like, how is it I don't catch this when I'm listening to it while I'm editing? And yet, moment yeah, it's, been uploaded, it's, it's like, so oh. hard. That's why that's my eyes are kind of my eyes are kind of just glued to the I forget what it's called, but the decibel level meter, the decibel meter, hmm. the one that gives the negative twenty to negative twelve. My biggest tip for that is like I try to keep my dynamic range kind of in between the negative twenties, negative twelves, with peaks at not at negative nine. Just looking at that level at that meter, um, and then that's not like you're not really looking at the peak peaks per se you're looking at where the sound typically is or where the majority of the sound of the green goes i guess if i had if i was able to screen share something i would do that just to show you because i I don't know if i'm being clear on what i mean or not on that okay yeah i I feel Uh, like um it's something i probably want to yeah basically basically basically, uh, yeah yeah, yeah, I could put out a video like sound design tips or whatever, but um, yeah, basically just the way I sound design is by looking at that meter and making sure that the green bar isn't too low or too high. And if it's peaking, then I need to turn it down. Like if it's going into like the yellows and the reds at negative six and negative three, that's when I got to really turn it down. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like the computer will be right on that. Like you got to look at the dynamic range and peaks just for sound edits and stuff. Oh, some good tips there. Um, so, uh, Mecca, you, Vox, um, Aura, any of you guys got any, uh, any experiences, uh, you want to share about with, uh, Burnout? Yeah, I'm sure. Oh. That is all. What? <laughs> You're in Burnout? <laughs> just, uh, you know, just what you I said. playing the game Burnout? <laughs> yeah, Burnout 2, you know, you guys want to, uh, well, what's the smile in front? You guys thought well? Burnout was good. How about Burnout 2? <laughs> yeah. Burnout 2. Burnier. I'm, I'm yeah, I was just wondering if you burnout. wanted to hang out with me and smoke weed and fill our bellies with diet soda and play Burnout Revenge for the PS2. <laughs> uh, oh, jeez. Oh, that's right. He does say that. 2004 <laughs> yeah, called They want your PS2 back. <laughs> no, but, um, you know, it, it'd probably be a very short one, you know, because I'm a, a, a very, uh, you know, I haven't been doing it for too long, but, you know, it's uh, just... Uh, frustrating right now and and i've tried and it was difficult because you guys earlier said that 11 labs rolled back general voices but it's still having me go in and verify every single voice uh so i i can i even for had enough of it non-politicians? everybody everybody oh my god maybe they yeah. flagged accounts that constantly use politicians maybe, and maybe that's yeah, that, that that's sort of one of the reasons why I deleted all of my uh, Obama Trump ones. Maybe that's why I never got hit. I use uh, Tom Bosley, uh, which you know is an an, an actor uh, that uh, played David the Gnome, and no way in hell could could I verify that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's just rough. So I, I think in a week I'll try to hop back on that old horse and 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 see if she bucks or not. If they ban my Asterian voice, I will be pissed. <laughs> I just um, think that you, you, we just need to leave, leave it. But that's my opinion. Well, then where would we go? Is the different eleven question. labs? Next question: Where would we go from eleven labs? Has to oh, be, wait, no, sorry. Uh, you said uh, we would leave it. I assume I thought you were talking. No, about no, no, just labs. eleven labs. Just, just eleven labs. I think. Yeah, but that's I, I have a, a pessimistic view um, on that. I, I, I did also I'm currently in. Burnout. I did do the entire Baldur's Gate. I have voices of all the Baldur's Gate three casts, so um, I might do voice videos with them. But we'll see. Oh, cool! All right. Um, yeah, but that's that 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 is, that's all. Yeah. Um, what I enough. what I did with those is well, what I did with my Asterian voice was I there's a YouTube video of like all of Asterian's voice lines, like an eight hour video. I recorded like the first forty minutes of it and put the, that in the Eleven Labs like file thingy. So like yeah. it, it's a good voice. But uh, to to get to get to the point, I I, I even talked to you know because Crafty is my DM, and I was uh, 
talking yeah, he's my to DM him. too. Yeah. <laughs> and I was I was talking to him after it was either before or after session about it and and it's just amazing that new zeal you get because I was like uploading a sizable video every every day. And now and now it just feels like it's kicking my butt. So I, I, I hope that uh, I can come back you know, sooner rather than, than later. Because I have the next few scripts all written out. So I could do what Malathrex is, is uh, uh, doing in, in, in that sense where he's really getting ahead of the game and, and having the videos out like that. Like I, if, I, if, I, if I could get onto that, then my problems would be over. Nice. So. Uh, Mecca. I I'm just I was just trying to keep it short. I'm way too new for the burnout. Like, I guess because I have a bunch of scripts, a lot of things, and like this whole like the arc I'm in right now, the story, it's done. Like I already I already it's it's done. I know how it all goes and ends. Really, what just happens if they survive? <laughs> that's about we'll, it. We'll make but sure like, your honeymoon you, phase lasts as long as it can. <laughs> well, no, see that's the thing. This story. Because it's a bigger thing. Like, this is just... If you could think of it as a season, this is season one, and I have 20 seasons. Because it's a bigger, bigger, bigger thing. And I've been alluding to it, like, really small. But, yeah, it's just one of those things where... I just wish I had more time. That's about it. But right now, it's just the holiday season. I got, you know... uh, Work's really busy, and then the kids, you know... Thanksgiving, Christmas. I want to spend time with them too. So just like dividing up the time. And Preach, as the videos get longer, like I want to keep doing more things to them. Like the animations for battle maps. Like this next video is 90% battle, nice. 10% not battle. And I thought that was going to be easier, but <laughs> I started doing like fancier animations. What so software and do then you the use? battle cards. Filmora. I use Filmora. Okay. Yeah. I, I just I just did it because a bunch of YouTubers recommended it, and I was like, let's try it. And then um, I was about to actually make the first video with the watermark, but my wife was like, no, you're not doing that, and she paid for the software. <laughs> so yeah, you guys almost had Phil Moore as the yeah, that's <laughs> as a life. watermark. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like I totally do get burnt out though. Like I understand like where people are coming from, especially like effects when you're going like crazy because I, I was there watching every single one i was at work and i'm like heck yeah more dropping and when you did a new video i would literally reset the playlist because i'd have them saved in my own personal one to like episode one just to just to get the whole thing because i mean i had eight hours at work like yeah. all this content was awesome you guys you guys are the reason why so like the story yeah, I've been that for, a grind, whole man. Year, <laughs> for a whole year yeah. of cooking the story and and i wish i could like talk about it but i'm, I'm gonna end up spoiling it <laughs> and i, I don't want okay. to uh, keep, yeah. keep those spoilers to yourself man <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i feel like you know burnout in this field can like lead to burnout in other fields like um with the D game i'm currently hosting you know it is amazing and i love hosting it but sometimes i get really really tired and just feel burnt out so then i'm like reminding myself why i'm hosting it and why and like the joy i feel when i do that mm. and that's sort of a one of the ways i try to combat the that kind of feeling tired and burned out is just to like think of things that i enjoy about doing that thing i guess yeah well I, there there are a few tips that you know anyone can like try to follow to try to avoid things like burnout and yet trying to stick to a schedule um can can sort of actually be a positive and a negative because if you're if you're trying to stay consistent with your uploads if anything happens outside of youtube that puts a delay it then starts putting a stress on meeting that schedule <clears throat> yeah, you know, I feel like a I feel like having a consistent work schedule is a good thing to combat burnout. Not a consistent upload schedule, but a consistent like work schedule. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that is good. So, going on to sort of what led up to the point, my 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 biggest issue I was having it was the it was the the real life scheduling. So up until I'd say about. Um, eight, eight, nine months ago, I was able to stay pretty consistent. 
with with videos you know i wouldn't say there was like it wasn't like every week it was probably maybe every other week maybe a, a bit of variation but there was stuff that was coming out because my work schedule i had one week where i worked uh a, like a, a day shift so i wouldn't really be working on anything at that point because i'd be coming home i'd be spending time with my family maybe socializing a little bit that sort of thing the other week i was on the late shift which would have coincided with a typical nine to five on a est timeline so when i'm coming home at that point family's asleep there's you know no one else is up uh, it was the perfect time i could put a few hours each day into whatever i wanted to do so a lot of it was obviously making the content then about it got it got to a certain point where i changed jobs moved into a new into a new job that completely changed the how my shifts were working i was ended up working longer hours and it was still in the day shift so i tried to make adjustments to see you know what could i do i knew the videos were going to take longer but I was struggling with this new job it was very difficult um it was the same sort of field as what i was already in but it was like a next level and uh, not like manager level just just sort of like the work itself was just a lot more intense uh, a lot more pressure and doing a couple of extra hours each day effectively another 10 hours of in the week um, and then trying to find that sort of balance when i was at home it really had a knock-on effect and that was always in the back of my head like it's not like i tried to rush any videos but because i would like something would happen with the pc it, it wasn't it would it would it was working too slow a typical three hour session for me working on a video i'd probably get a good 10 15 20 minutes like done like and that like maybe spread out over a couple of sort of projects now it was at that particular point i was lucky if i could get like three minutes sort of done and it just it dragged and dragged and dragged until eventually i got on to my now current job and i'm on a more permanent basis on the evening shift again so i thought oh, okay excellent i'm gonna be able to get back into the rhythm this all should be going fine but then there just something would happen in real life and it's like right gotta put priority on that because then as much as i love doing this channel i've got to prioritize the real life gotta put food on that table gotta keep keep the bellies full gotta keep that roof over the head but every time it would just knock everything back a little bit more and it was just a little bit of issue here an issue there and then eventually the uh, the 11 labs obviously situation made everything just 10 times worse because it's like right i'm limited to how much time i've got on these videos oh look i've now got to put more work in just to get these voices to sound all right which they never really did they never really got that quality back that they originally had and then when the final when they dropped that final sort of hammer ban and i i I just saw that it's like no you need to verify your dm voice at that point i just sort of like fell back in my chair i was like yeah okay like i'm taking this as a sign i need to take a step back from this because like it that is just that's burnt me right out and it was just like that that sort of fight had sort of just gone for a bit and thankfully not to the point where like i said like i'm not quitting i'm not shutting the channel out. i'm not doing i'm not pulling an an ai uh, president i discord and fucking just getting rid of everything fuck that guy um gonna be gonna make some conspiracy theory videos on that <laughs> <laughs> it's just um, the worst case of burnout <laughs> yeah <laughs> jesus christ man that guy I, I i completely agree with you vox's tier list that is like a betrayal of the community mm -hmm. i'll tell you that is one there's actually one thing that has been keeping my spirits up right from the start like if any point i ever felt like you know things weren't so great with the channel or i was feeling a little bit down about it i'm not talking about like men i have just like a bit just bummed out a bit you know you know the expression when you're just a bit down in the dumps because it's not you're not being able to keep up with what you wanted to, to do and what you want to produce the community for all this is phenomenal i've 
never seen a community like that. I've been on YouTube since I was like 16 years old. I'm I'm I'm, I'm in my late 30s. So uh, it's 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 astounding just to see just how positive everyone is, how supportive they all are, you know, how understand when like anyone I've seen anyone on here or like any of the other channels where they post it out say oh there's going to be a delay guys you know next episode's not coming out for a bit or what anything like that everyone comes back as oh no take your time don't worry about it it's all good we're all still going to be here and it's just sort of like wow that you couldn't ask for a better community you know and i i think that has been such a, a huge positive out of, out of everything that has come out of of this whole genre and, and beyond, like, you know, not just with the D&D, &D, but just with the whole president's content in, in general. Yeah, along with that, and tying it back to the burnout, right? Like, yeah, the community here really is just awesome. Um, like, it's been really cool coming back after, I think it was, like, 14 months. Well, it was last August that I posted my last call with the movie. Mm -hmm. So it was well over a year that I came back and I'm still having, like, I still recognize a lot of the same people who were watching my channel and commenting back then who have returned to watch the channel. So like, yeah, the community will wait for you to get things in your life. Right. And for the vid to get the videos, right. Um, yeah, it's definitely an awesome community for sure. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Uh, you folks, you, you obviously, I don't know if you, I mean, I've seen a couple of people comment on your videos that I have seen in some of the president um, D and D uh, channels. How do you find your community? Because I know it must be it would be slightly different because obviously it's a different type of genre within this whole sort of collection. I do see a lot of cross pollination. Often when I check the comments of uh, other other channels, I will recognize a few of the commenters. A, co oh. a couple of the commenters that are the comments on like every one of my videos dude i love that guy yeah he's everywhere which one squaw oh squaw <laughs> yeah he comments oh. on everybody Wait, who who's the video that made meme and dice that made squaw and meme and oh, yeah, meme yeah. Squaw. <laughs> i believe joe biden was an aracocra yes he was right yeah, that's it and that's it was awesome from. <laughs> I didn't know bucket that. of corn bucket of whole him. corn <laughs> the guy this one this one commentator has immortalized that channel <laughs> that's awesome i did not know that but overall I, I, the community is really supportive uh i've noticed uh they 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 do get upset when i starve them of specific content for a while and you know it's understandable you know mm -hmm. It's understandable. They're like, hey, where's this content? You know, you're uploading this, but where's that? You know, you talk about this. I'm like, yeah, I'm not quitting on that. But, you know, it's it's like, speaking of my burnout thing, I, I feel a different kind of burnout. It's also kind of a a mental thing for me. I don't, I don't, I don't get burnout in the traditional sense, but mm -hmm. if it, it's like, um, it's like an immense writer's block. Like I get, I get in front of the computer and I can't write anything like not even basics. I just can't, I just, I'm, I'm not sure it's bur burnout, but I just don't feel it. Like nothing is flowing in my head. That that's that makes for good content. I think like, you're I describing burnout. No, I want to. I want. I sit at my computer and I want to, but it's like I can't think of. I can't think of anything. It's it's then weird. You just got writer's block. It's, I was gonna say. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It like it's different. Yeah. I'm I'm sort of a heavily mood based person, and mm. when I'm feeling it, I you know I can crank out content. You know I. When I was feeling making my um, home safety hotline series, I made the first three episodes in four days. I cranked that out. Damn, nice. You know, I, I and I wish I could always do that, but it's just like I, I, I seemingly enter these uncontrollable flow states. Well, let's say, <laughs> and, then, and I'm just like, all right, let's crank out content. But then there's a lot, a lot of the time, it's just like it's moment to moment inspiration for me. Yeah, I, I will. I will open. Da I will open DaVinci Resolve. I will have Plage T up, and I will just nothing flowing through my head. That's funny. <laughs> nothing. I'm like, damn. I know where I want where I want to go. I just don't know how to get there. All right. You and know. What have you found that's sort of snapped you like back? 
Like, so you have these moments <laughs> where you're sitting there and there's there's nothing like coming to it. What has it sort of taken? Is it just been random, or is it like is it like is it like a thing you go through? Like, do you go and watch something, or you go and play a game, or you, you go out somewhere, and then like when you when you're done, you sort of come back and it's like, ah, right, here we go. It, it feels pretty random for me, honestly, and it's it's kind of uh, sad because it because <laughs> it feels pretty random. I wish I could. Uh do something to be like all right all I, all I need to do is like you know go for a walk and come back or something but i haven't found anything that consistently gets me rare in the go and you know thinking thinking quick yeah. it's just like i feel a mental a mental block in my head but it's not like not i, I it's i want to do it i want to make as much content as possible yeah. and i want as much people to make as much content as possible but i i don't know it's just sometimes i feel this mental block that's in the way so i think if all right, so what I want to do is to wrap wrap up the the subject on the burnout. I want, I want to see if each of us can just give one bit of advice or like one tip to sort of help either avoid burnout or deal with burnout. Um, if you haven't got anything, just say pass, no problem. We'll move on to the next one. Um, I'll start with myself. Uh, give yourself um, give yourself breaks. So don't like if you you want to put yourself in a schedule, fine. But spread it out a little bit. Keep it a bit more. Instead of like maybe trying to, if you trying to go for like two free uploads a week, maybe start off a little bit uh, wider and then build it up over time. Just to give yourself enough time to adjust, especially if it's, it's something that's new coming in. You think, yeah, this is going to be great. I could, I could be able to, I can pump all these videos out and perhaps maybe not given a full consideration of like how much uh, real life is going to get in the way so give yourself time if I, i'd say if I make a long story short give yourself time uh, yeah very well very well said um i think one piece of advice that i would give is to not be afraid to experiment with making different types of content as well. Um, that might just apply for my particular type of burnout slash writer's block, but um, even if the videos like don't perform as well, you have a lot of people who say like, oh, I prefer your other content. Even then, like just being willing to try out making different types of content, like worst case scenario the video doesn't do well and you can eventually go back to whatever you were doing before but to just give yourself kind of like what crafty was saying to give yourself a break with whatever you're doing now um and to yeah be willing to experiment with different types of content Ash? um yeah uh sorry could you come back to me i'm getting a call not a problem mecca um don't don't set deadlines and honestly just you gotta enjoy it. You gotta want to do it. If you don't want to do it, just take a break. Like the video, like you can make a video any at any moment. You know, just walk away, go play a game, or go watch a movie. Whatever you really need, because it really depends on the person. Because it, yeah, you know, it's easy for me to come in being like, "Hey, boom, boom, guns ho," but like, dude, like I'm, I'm sure it hits everyone. Like, no, do do what you need. That's why, like, some of you might think it says, "Get some sleep." And yes, please get some sleep. It it helps. <laughs> uh, Vox um yeah I have a um it, it, I think it's important to understand how you work you know some people can you know you're there are like the AI guy who can is just you know on all cylinders at all times you know but some people they can feel it and they can work themselves like some people I I, I think their their mental state works like uh like uh like a uh, like a bar, you know, their bar starts all the way up. And then it, it, the more they work, the lower it gets for like inspiration. Right. Some people, a lot of people are like that. Um, don't, you know, don't let your bar reach all the way down. Cause then you're probably, you know, you might not be interested in making content at all then, you know? So, uh, pacing, you got to learn your own pacing. You got to learn how you work. Um, and if you absolutely don't want to make a piece of content, maybe it's a series you already have, but you just don't feel it anymore. Don't feel obligated to finish that before you start making other content. You know, it's better to make content than just dwell on a piece of content that you don't want to make. Yeah, no, that's solid. 
That's really good. Amen to that. Yeah, yeah. I I feel like I'm sort of attached to women politicians, and I kind of want to make other kinds of content, but at the same time, I kind of want to finish the story arc. I think that's a really good piece of advice, just to work on other series. And oh, uh, and um, back. yeah, and, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, diversifying your content is also good. Oh yeah, like you don't have to go. You don't have to go too crazy. You don't have to dip your, you know, dip your toe in every every uh, pool of water. But you know, but I I wanted to get out of the when I was just making Pokemon. I didn't want to stay stuck in there. You know, I didn't want to be like a, a Minecraft tuber who can only make Minecraft content because that's all his audience will watch. You know, yeah. I, I wanted the people to watch basically, you know, anything I upload. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I mean, if I if I went by what was most popular on my uploads, I'd be making nothing but Squidward Sings Disney songs videos because uh, my Squidward <laughs> Sings Hellfire is still my most viewed video, and that took me three days to make. <laughs> I have, like, Women Politicians 4, which took me months to make, and it has, like, 1.3 thousand. Hey, Squidward has a voice of an angel. I, I don't he think does. does. Yeah, he really does, though. That's, that's the biggest thing AI showed us. <laughs> Is, um, is that he was just playing the wrong instrument? Is, is that? Your, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so, what, what would that, your uh, advice be, Ashen? My, my advice. So, for people who want to make any kind of content, really, you know, it doesn't even have to be AI related. Um, definitely make it because you want to make it. Um, if you. If you feel like, you know, you have any, like, mental stuff going on or anything like that, just, like, I, I, I guarantee you, I started feeling mentally better when I worked on these videos. It's just kind of gave me, like, a, like, you know, a project to do, sort of, like, I don't want to be too su super sappy about it, but, like, a sense of purpose, in a sense, I guess. Like, you know, just contributing to the world things that people like i feel has increased my mental state and i want to be able to keep doing that and so in order to keep doing that i just got to take care of myself um you know it, it just sounds like you know i could put on like the the self-help book paragraphs of like you know have a schedule you know get up in the morning you know eat you know eat your breakfast you know um, if you're able to, and I've heard this from my sister, um, if you're able to make your office a different room than the one you sleep in, um, if you're able to, if you have the space for that, um, huh. but yeah, just like, and then again, prioritize your own life first. I'm also just, can I just, I, I got a call from my girlfriend and you want to know, uh, so we, we bought a house and they accepted Ooh. the offer. Hey. So I'm very happy. That I just got that call. That was why I had to go. But um, I'm very what? happy. E. <laughs> so yeah, that's you know just gotta look at and then once. So that's probably going to put a damper in any videos that I make because I'll be busy with that. But um, hopefully people will be satisfied. Woman politician six, um, enough to wait a few more months before my next thing, which well, this, uh, will will be cool. Well, this community has has proven that they they are probably some of the most patient uh viewers out there so i think thank you so fun. much I, I am super grateful to all 589 of my subscribers for still being so patient with me thank you so much <laughs> um uh finally aura yes two words touch grass <laughs> Dis <laughs> oh my god so true disconnect <laughs> to reconnect there's uh there's a beautiful life go experience creation and and uh you know just kind of disconnect to reconnect you know fast work if you fast from your phone or your connected device and you just get out into the world and uh like experience it it'll really regenerize you you know you will just resurface and you'll feel great and uh you'll go out and experience so many more uh experiences to bring you know into your, your your creative side you'll come back refreshed so go and engage in real life activities reboot your mind and most of all go outside perfect i think that's uh it brilliantly ends the 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 subject on burnout 
And that's going to be our two topics. So we're going to move on to the next part, which is uh, questions from viewers. So for the last week, uh, a few of us have been reaching out on our community posts or our discords, asking viewers if they had any questions that I can uh, pose to the rest of you. Now, some of these will apply to everyone. Some will apply to a few. And then there's a whole bunch, I think, are directed directly to Malifrex. Uh so uh, we're gonna I'm gonna read out who has sent it and what the question is, and uh, yeah, we're gonna go from there. So we'll go again. We'll do a, around the around the table, as it were. So we got about about twenty questions, I believe, in the end. So thank you, everybody um, who has submitted your questions. Very much appreciate that. It really helps uh, get the conversations rolling. Uh, anyone who's watching the premiere of this that's uh, come out on the Friday, um, if any of us are obviously on that live watch with you and you've got any further questions, I'm sure you've probably already been posting some. But of course, if you want to post any more, go right ahead. And if we're on now, I'm sure we'll be answering them for you. But our first one uh, is off a Discord. It's from uh, someone called Jello Jacks. What's up, Jello? Um, what has been the hardest thing? when creating the president videos and uh, we'll start with aura well for me it, it wasn't actually writing i'll keep this brief because my campaign is entirely based off of uh, a campaign that i'm dming with all my real life lifelong friends so uh w with this it's uh teaching this old dog new tricks and and i have a very simple background growing up my closest neighbors were a cow and a horse and the Cow is pretty cool, but the horse was a bit of a douche. So, like, I didn't get internet till I was much older. And uh, uh, learning about AI and and trying to circumnavigate this whole world is 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 just been is just been tough. But you know, uh, we make do. Cool, uh, Mel. Um, yeah, for me. So, I think that one of the best parts about this AI is that it makes making videos so much easier. Like the production quality of all of our videos is just leagues ahead of anything I could have done just a couple of years ago before the AI started coming about. Um, with that being said, the hardest thing for me is getting the voices right, and it's something that I still hate doing with a passion. Um, yeah, I just voices are the bane of my existence whenever I'm working on my videos. Mecca. Uh, for me, it's finding the time to do it, really. Like, right now, I, I talk about, like, you know, get some sleep. But, yeah, I, I sacrifice sleep to make the videos. Um, or I work all my days off when I get it. But since it's the holidays, it's just been busy. But, yeah, just finding the time to do it. That's been really my hardest thing. All right. Uh, Ashen? Um, combination of motivation, determination, and just actual committing to doing it because after a day of work, I have two choices. I can either work on the video or I play video games or do anything else. And when faced with all of those choices, only the working on it gets prior sometimes gets priority. So yeah, toughest one easily for me is prioritizing the video creation itself. All right. Thanks for that. And uh, you, Vox? Uh, what was the exact question? It was, um, what tips do you have for... What has been the hardest thing when creating the president videos? The hardest thing? Yeah. So the hardest thing that you've come across, uh, you've experienced when, when creating these videos. So maybe the hardest um, it could be, like, maybe what's the most difficult? Uh... I think it's all piss easy for him. Moving on. No, no, go on. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's Joe. Uh, it was. Uh, I was. I think I was about to say something like, um, for me personally, it's writing a good story, even if it's a small one. You know what I mean? Mm. Like writing. Mm -hmm. Writing, writing something that's feel that feels rewarding to watch. Yeah, you know so, what I mean. So, like, so like, oh, like, hey, those. Yeah, something, something that isn't just mindless. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something that isn't no, that isn't entirely you know turn your brain off. 
nothing nothing's exactly wrong with that but i want something that's a, just a, a little at least a little bit deeper you know and people latch on to that people really latch on to when something's a little bit deeper yeah so yeah. so it's rewarding view wise and and follower wise too to do that yeah okay um i'd say for for me it's getting the audio right and i, I don't even mean like getting the voices i meant like just getting the audio levels it's and it's not even the president's videos that's just my videos in general <laughs> but uh thank you very much jello for that uh, our next one is from pollock shadow bliss also from discord what's up pollock uh, now this will be for uh those that do the D D. do you actually roll dice behind the scenes or do you fudge them uh aura well, uh, yes, uh, that's, uh, the, the question is yes to both. So, um, I have to write down and try to take notes for everything that happens in the actual D and D campaign. So they were at one time originally rolled, but now I kind of have to, uh, you know, go off my notes and, and remember exactly what happened in the campaign and then, uh, just kind of adjust accordingly. Fair enough. Mal? Uh, yeah, I, all of mine are rolled for real. Um, I roll them as I'm writing the script out, and then I just go off of whatever the rolls are. Excellent. Mecca? Yeah, mine are also rolled, except I have fudged, because like at one point I got four 20s in a row, and wow. um, the battle was going to be over in seconds, and I said, yeah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Yeah, the the D and D Beyond encounter literally gave me four or twenties in a row. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess we're playing I, Burnout Two yeah, after all. Burnout I've, heard, I've, heard, <laughs> I, I've heard problems with the with the roll twenty thing doing that before. Well, this was doing roll excessive. 20. I use, I use not, a D and D uh, Beyond. That's like, what I meant. Uh, that's what I meant. I, I, oh, I, I one, misspoke. Yeah. I, I've yeah. heard I've heard things about that. Like someone said they got nine ones in a row, and like. <laughs> Yeah, five twenties in a row, or so. I, I've heard. I've heard it's it's kind. It, it just does that, you know. Yeah. So I, that I now just have like a, one. Yeah. Get a physical. So now, I, you know, get a physical one. Yeah, yeah. That's what I do now. I just have a little box, like a little shoe lid, and I have a d twenty, yeah. and then the other dice too. And I just, I just do that because, yeah, yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, what about you, Ashim? Um, I, I'm sorry. I. Uh, could you please repeat the question? Uh, do you roll? Do you actually roll dice behind the scenes, or do you fudge them? So for the first five women politicians, all of the dice rolls have been fudged. Just um, okay. like I, I did not know pretty much how to play the game at that point. Well, by f when five rolled around, I knew more, but like I didn't really have. I also I also fudged the rolls in five, the two that there were. For six, because that's my first time doing a actual battle map, I did write a combat log for it. So um, I did play out the entire battle scene as I would a normal game with the six characters versus their enemies. And then after I wrote out the combat log and started writing the script, I then added some more stuff, like just some corrections, maybe some stuff that makes things a little bit more cinematic. Um, sometimes I would forget to have one of the people roll a wisdom save to get out of hold person. So I'd add that in and then I'm like, okay, it makes more sense for the narrative to, for them to fail or for them to succeed. It's so like there will, there is still some fudging going on in six, but for the most part, I did not fudge the rules in six, but in all of my other videos, I did fudge the rules cause I didn't even roll cause I just wrote out, Oh, uh, you get a 19. This happens. No, oh, fair enough. Um, I myself, nope, uh, I've never fudged the rolls. That's how I ended up losing half the party uh, at one point in the campaign. And that's also how in the Christmas one shot, the entire party got wiped out. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. They said Obama to leave them though. Like, you know, it, it wasn't entirely luck. <laughs> um, I, I guess I sort of, I've, I've, just gone that way ever since I, I was playing D D originally i just never saw the i never wanted to fudge the role. i always knew it was going to be a gamble though i knew at some point or another that role those roles were going to work against me i didn't realize it was going to happen that soon um but 
it, it's just again it's like with D D in general you you do have to just roll with the dice and you know depending on the sort of dm you get to depend on uh, what they might do for it but as it was with the series i thought you know what really good lessons just to show people like who don't know D D. it's like yeah just because you're having a lot of fun and stuff doesn't mean that it's all gonna go your way like things are gonna turn things are gonna change and you could very well lose that character you love so i was like yep just never done it but uh thank you very i really much for that. oh yeah, yeah go on oh yeah i really did appreciate the twist ending in that and that they didn't win and that i really i think this is the only one that has the characters lose at the end uh, which i i want to see more of <laughs> well, thank you very much pollock for that one um, i'm kind of shocked that everyone uh the, how widespread it is that everyone rolls actually because it's it's it, to me it's not it's not as much you know playing D D as it is you know telling a t telling a story you know so i figured you would just roll for whatever story you have in mind well the whole concept roll what's best. of of a story in D D that's something that's relatively new for Dungeons and Dragons. Like, it's, I'd say, and there'd probably be people that would be correcting me on this one, but I, I get what I've gotten the impression over, over the last couple of years and what I've seen in, like, forums and such. Is I'm that, sorry, I think you're cutting out. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Right, let me start that again. Um, over the years, uh, as I've been playing, I've been playing the game, I've been reading up in forums, uh, you know, in the chat rooms and stuff like that. And from what I've sort of gathered, the whole aspect about storytelling is something that's relatively new uh, in comparison to how long D&D &D has been around. It's maybe from like maybe version maybe three or four sort of onwards. I think definitely with like version like five, the, the concept of like having a, a big story sort of thing took a lot more precedent over like more than the rest of it so more than the, more than the mechanics even yes yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. i've run sessions yeah. with no combat at all and those are some of the best sessions i've gone yeah the, it's the, also really user friendly like beginner friendly yeah the newer and, one. And, but, and but are, it gets critiqued for that they're, they are they are fun but um yeah. i've always i've always liked the fact that you know you do you, you build the story around what the roles end up doing I think that's probably partly why I've never, no, I never yeah, really yeah. scripted it is because again, like I could play out like this is what I wanted thing to do and get several nat ones. It's like right, okay, well, there's no way that he just caught that knife in midair and did a somersault and threw it back. Like no, that knife went through his jugular. Um, <laughs> you know, you know yeah. What I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, no, you're not right. Wrong. Well, logic. I, I yeah. agree with it, but I'm just saying because it's a it's a YouTube series and you're scripting out mm. every, every, you know, all the characters and what they say, what they do. And, you yeah. know, you're planning the story ahead of time. So I figured, you know, might as well make, you know, make the story what it is. And if you yeah, think you but, should fudge rules, I think that's okay. You know? Right. Yeah. But like the, for this case, I think it's, I think it's though. fine. D and D has a lot of solutions though to death. We have resurrection. That's a, seventh level spell and your characters can get access to it at level 13 or you can just straight up put it in in, in the story as like hey um the, the 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 team really wants to bring back this person so they're gonna try to find everything they can to get a scroll of resurrection like you can yeah, like implement in the, yeah, it into guys. it you can yeah, like the yeah, but... exactly you can implement it and it's more content so you can make a death count if you really want that character to come back hey it can happen Yeah. I yeah. mean look at my thing Biden and Trump are bros. You don't think if one of them <laughs> dies, they wouldn't do everything they could to bring back the other? Wholesome. <laughs> exactly. True. And and that's kind of how like I kind of planned for them. Like, okay, if someone dies, they need to have a thing like, oh, they're bros. They're bros. They're bros. Okay, so then boom, there you go. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, it, it, yeah, it, that's how you can work around that. Uh, D&D gives you options. Uh, next Death question. is not the end. Yes. Uh, is also... Another one from Pollock Shadow Bliss. Um, have you considered doing AI campaigns with OG characters? Now, considered it. You mean OC characters, like original characters? Yeah, OG characters. Yeah, original characters. Mm, yeah. When Eleven Labs gets their AI voices to sound more human, that's something I might consider. Like right now, they still kind of sound like robots. Um. But they're, they're getting better. 
I, I very, I would very much like if I, if I got to the point that I knew I could actually have the time to to do it. I would very much like to launch my my first ever uh, campaign that I ran, my homebrew pirate world. Oh, cool! I ran that for a year and a half uh, before the party was tpk but um <clears throat> spoilers <laughs> well it doesn't mean that's, that's how it's going to happen they'll probably die in the first like two episodes or something and the end of that series. <laughs> but um yeah i would I'd, I'd very much be tempted to do it the OGS. you know you've seen how well it can work um ai guy and then the ai dd campaign that uses peter griffin there's yeah there's absolutely i could definitely see that as, as an option yeah, I will yeah. eventually uh, do a D and D care uh, D and D party with uh, Wario and Waluigi and Mario and Luigi. I mean, That's... I think what I mean, yeah, we could always do video game characters. Like, I could have a Starian with Lazel. Um, I, 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 I read that question as like a Are we going to make our own characters, not just using like yeah, popular that's, that's characters what I... in fiction? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you mean well again, characters yeah. you make. Yeah, yeah, OC. I thought yeah, that's how I read the question. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. No, yeah, well in that respect, a hundred percent I would definitely be interested. In. Um I would probably but I probably wouldn't use AI voices. I'd I'd probably do my own voices at that point and maybe get one or right. some other people to come in and Ooh. do some voices. Yeah, well. just start impersonating it honestly. Because be like, that would be difficult because you already have a, a, at that a point, fictional just... character doing another fictional character. Yeah. <laughs> at that uh, point it just becomes yeah. a D and D let's play, which I'm not opposed to. Alright. But yeah, D and D Let's Plays uh podcasts are pretty fun. There have been a couple that I've enjoyed listening to. I yeah. think there's a there's a new one that's it's been it's been in the works for like a year. It gets launched on December the sixth, um, and I cannot remember for the life of me what it's called now. <laughs> it's like Dragon Dice or something. Or I'll have to find out what it what it's called. But um, they they start they got it launched on Kickstarter, and like they've gone like full production, like full sets of miniatures everything's all painted they've got four people in oh my doing all the acting stuff the guy's in like film production so that's where he's got all the experience from mm. there's like video editing involved and like all kinds of bits in it all looks fantastic very much looking forward to that but it's like it's like he's already got the production level of like um critical role you know and he's just ready he's just been building it up ready before, to like before he's launched so, I mean, that sounds like something I'm uh, definitely going to have to. I'm going to have to find out what it's bloody called now. But um, anyway, uh, who? Anyone else? Uh, Mal, did you do you have an answer for Pollock's question? Um, I, I've always wanted to do D and D with like the Avengers and stuff. Um, oh, yeah. but yeah, I, and I even started in on trying to clone the voices, but then I got scared of a Disney lawsuit, so I backed away from that one. <laughs> um, and I launched a my uh, Call of Cthulhu mockumentary, which was all custom characters. Um, and I was really into that for a little bit, but um, yeah, I just think that there's a really cool uh, banter that you can do between the presidents that just makes it a lot easier to not do custom characters. Bro's more scared at Disney than he is the government. Yeah. <laughs> can you blame me? <laughs> but That's real. You do That's bring real. up a good point. Like the dynamic of what makes it work so well is that they all kind of define like an archetype and a friend group, all the AI president. So it would be hard to recapture that. True. I guess it'd be something you'd have to build up over time. You'd start with, you'd probably have a very small audience, but you probably get a lot of people who come and watch it if you've already had that existing content to start with, like of the presidents. Right. And then you, like we've kind of what we talked about earlier about like building up onto something else, just using the president as a stepping stone. You could even go down the route of, you know, the modern Star Wars, where you had the old characters kind of passed it on to the new characters. You know, maybe not with that poor level of writing, but the point is, is that you could have <laughs> you could have the presidents, you know, start off in that new campaign, and they you get introduced to the new characters, and then something happens to the presidents, and then that's where the story now continues with the new characters. Sort of yeah, yeah. As introduction. Yeah, I've, I've, 
I've, I've, I sort of started my channel with the idea of doing something like that. But, uh, oh, uh, by the way, the that group I was saying that's coming out, so they're called the Dice Decide. That's what they're called. Yeah, anyone wants to look them up, the Dice Decide. Look very good. Uh, anyway, mm. thank you very much, Pollock, uh, for that one. Uh, we have one from, I don't know if I pronounced this right, Shine, S-H-I-N-E-I. -E anyone know how to pronounce that correctly? Mm -mm. I think that sounds great. Yep. Yeah. All right, this one uh, is on Discord. Um, if you could recommend a different AI voice maker, which one would it be? Well, I feel like we might have already answered that question. <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. of these we answered <laughs> during the uh, during the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we need to directly answer that anymore. I think we yeah. got that one. I hope that answers your question there, Sinead. Okay, we have one here from Rib on Discord. Any guest characters you want in one of your campaigns now guest characters i'm assuming they just mean like another ai voice but could be open to interpretation so um aura oh yeah it's it's already coming down the pike it'll be way further into the campaign but i'm gonna have little jeff goldblum oh yes and we're gonna be <laughs> making him the oh elder brain and it's gonna be terrific you know i i sorry i just had to try to oh, see if i could jeff uh, goldblum as an elder you brain watch when you're going you, you, you you're you're like copying his his beat <laughs> The uh, uncle is it Uncle Sam AI that uncle uncle uses him Sam, as a DM. Yeah. Uncle Sam that was AI. it was uh, when that when he dropped it was like the week because because now all my players are fully uh, aware that people watch their their characters online and and you know it's they they have to try to mitigate like the the, the guy that plays Donald Trump's character Eldoran has to mitigate being you know as cocky he has to kind of you know very much a Gilderoy Lockhart has to kind of bring down sort of the pompousness even to get to that role. And, and uh, whenever he met the elder brain in the campaign, he was like the, this, whenever it goes to YouTube, that needs to be Jeff Goldblum. Nice. So. Uh, Mal. I, I don't think I have any particular guests. Like I said, voices are the bane of my existence. So for as long as I can get away with just doing my, my default four, then I'm going to keep doing just these four. Um, but maybe in the future. Mecca? Yeah, actually, yeah. I have one planned for day two. That's that's when the next voice will be in, and they're going to be like a whole character, everything. Um I could say who it is. I don't know if that people will like ruin it for them or not, but there is one more. They're just they're coming in day two. Okay. And then that'll probably be it until way later, like next the like after after the whole mystery of Rock Wish is over. Sweet. Uh what about you, Ashim? Um probably gonna do some more Asterian stuff. Um I like I said I have the Baldur's Gate three cast all transcribed ready to go. Um, so probably some more video game characters would be guest characters. Um, that's what I'm aiming at so far. Oh, sweet. Um, you Vox, now obviously I know you know, you know, run campaigns as such, but, um, I think the question could still apply to like your videos, obviously with like the tweaking presidents, any sort of guest characters come to mind that you would have in your future videos? Um, no one in particular, because if I want to put them in, I will, you know? Yeah. Um, I might work my way up into including fictional characters, because currently I don't. Okay. So there's that. All right, yeah, fair. Yeah, bring in Peter Griffin with Tweaking Presidents. I think that yeah. would work. <laughs> oh, oh. Tweaking Peter. <laughs> Heck yeah. Oh, oh, my God. I think it would That's work. Gold. <laughs> what what gold. video would Peter be in? Tweaking. Oh. No, what video? <laughs> what 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 for? What what video in the format? Mm. Would it be like ranking adult cartoon shows or something? He could be in honestly anything. Ranking beer. <laughs> ranking what beer, ranking what beer. beer to uh, have when you're tweaking? Ranking Family Guy seasons. <laughs> family Guy would be good, but that's so ranking hard to do because drinks. you know who's who's watched the last few. A lot of people. They're still making them. Right. Yeah. There's. There's some good parts, and then there's some just god awful parts, like unwatchably bad parts. <laughs> it's 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 a roller coaster, you know, ups and downs, ups and downs. Yeah, I'm with but, you. Yeah, 
pretty much. Uh, only voices I I I seek to uh, to include someday are fictional characters. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, for myself, I would probably, given given I'm uh, I'm across the pond, I would probably maybe do like a a one off. Uh, maybe get like uh, Boris Johnson, like nice. Dave, Dave Cameron. Uh, Rishi Sunak, you know, get, get some of those. So get some of those guys in. I know there's already a channel that that uses them, um, which is pretty fun. But I'd, I'd probably have a have a go with that because it'd be a bit easier to have them like with like a bit of British humour, sort of like behind them. I mean, yeah, it's kind of weird out. when 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 people do are like from the UK do British stuff with uh, the US presidents. It's just like, bro. No one says that over here. <laughs> no one talks like that shot. over here. That's that's how I know AI guy is is from the UK. I, I just know he is. He is. Yep. 100%. I just know he is because of the way he talks sometimes with the characters. Yeah, hey, you mentioned uh Lishi Sunak. You ever thought about putting Vivek Ramaswamy next to him? I'd love to use Vivek Ramaswamy. <laughs> feel feel free to use that idea. It's uh <laughs> such a clown. Uh, this uh, next one is from Rib again, uh, but this one is directed to Mal. Um, how do you get the videos out so quickly? Four videos at long would take about a week to make. Uh, yeah, so the key is to cut every corner that you can possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I one, all my videos are just PowerPoint slides. Uh, so that that helps a lot. There's no fancy animations at the moment. Um, two, the API cut several hours off my workload, which was very nice. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, those are the two main things that help me cut down that production time a lot is just completely still images. I drop them in in sections. Um, it's a simple fade out, fade in, in between every slide so that's how it is right now at least nice thank you very much rip for your questions uh right our next one this is still off of discord uh eric silvertongue what's up eric uh how do you feel about creators like prez dice rolls taking inspiration to try out new rpg systems with presidents from you uh from you i'm I think this might have been directed at Mal again. I think so. Yeah, I, I think it's awesome. Um, yeah, oh, I, I think the coolest part about being in this community is how many people watch the videos and then they go and they make their own. And I think that that's really awesome. Yeah. So zero complaints. Yeah. If more people do it, all the better. It's, it's it's a matter of making more than 10 to see whether you're a mainstay. You know, because there's a lot of people that make a couple of videos and then they stop because it's hard. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, especially yeah, like, just again, make... with the early days of when all these sort of like channels were starting out. There's so many. Like, I mean, if we if you get to the point, let's say like when Clone first uploaded, he was like the tenth or eleventh channel to do, like just with just like with the D and D, like presidents. I think you had myself and Mean Beam dice were in that sort of like first 10 list and like everybody else there had sort of done were done by like episode three it's just like that was it that was the end of it and it's just like it's it's amazing just like how many how many channels and i imagine obviously if you scaled it out to then all the channels that did president's ai cat there's probably there's probably probably a good hundred channels i read i imagine by now given how long this has been going on for they probably all gave up after just a few episodes yeah, it's it's a shame when people do because they go in, they were like, yeah, I want to do that, and then they just stop because it's like, man, that's a, uh, oh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, they they realize their heart isn't in it, which is it's, okay. It's, good it's a big know. resource sink in every way, you know. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Time, money, effort. Yeah. Uh, thank you, mm -hmm. Eric, for that. Uh, another one from Shane. Eleven Labs being stupid how uh have you got past it well again we've gone and covered 
Uh, we've covered that in quite a bit of detail and uh, in the part about Level Lab. So thank you, Shane. I hope that hope what we discussed in that first hour has answered that question for you. Um, we have our next one from Viper Sniper Piper. This uh, particular matey. I recognize that name. Yep. This He's been is, in my live streams a couple times. Yeah, This matey uh, does get around on the community, um, an avid uh, supporter of the channels. Uh, top matey. Um, what do you guys think about the current state with the president's AI communities are going to be like now with Eleven Labs going scorch church with everything? Um, will you repeat that? Because sure. I think you cut out this a little bit. Crafty. Sorry. Uh, and uh, there you go. Real time example of my terrible audio. Did that all cut out again? <laughs> you cut Just out even bit, yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were doing a bit. Uh, real time examples, matey, of what I ha of what I have to go through with my audio. Fucking, fucking, fucking yeet this thing out the window. <laughs> what do you guys think about the current state with the president's AI communities are going to be like now with Eleven Labs going scorch earth, going scorch earth with everything? Um, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty optimistic considering that Eleven Labs did go scorch earth, and we're all still pretty much sticking around together. We're on this podcast right here. We're still on our Discord channels. We're still. You know, a couple of us are doing each other's D and D games, which is, I think, very cool. Yep. Sure. Um. You know, yeah, we're all sort of sticking around. Um. If Eleven Labs goes under, then there will be another site. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, I think right. I think you've summed it up quite well. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a, a close sort of connection that has been building between like all the channels and stuff. I mean, you Vox, I know you you have. I mean, like you had connection with uh, several others, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Discord server I'm a part of was originally just for Pokemon creators, and I was like, hey, you know, it's, it's you know, you know, we're we're a small niche in a small niche. We got to expand here. We got to start inviting like you know, all a bunch of quality creators to try to grow our community and our connections here. Yeah. So I, you know, I we we have like presidents play and. Uh, AI president chats in the server now and Shy Kong I'm trying to get AI senpai to join, but yeah, we, I'm, I'm fairly well connected nowadays. All right. I say we have a similar thing with the within the D and D sort of niche genre. I think we've got we've got the majority of the channels all on a on a, a separate Discord. Um, so there's a lot of communication going on there. Um, I do need to the invite out to a few of the newer channels that have been popping up but uh, it's just like yeah as Ashin was saying you know there's some of us that are sort of crossed into actual D, &D campaigns with each other there's lots of uh, like resource uh, parts of the channel so like we're sort of sharing ideas and we're helping each other out on like bits and pieces and again the way with the community is I, I think the state of it all is going to be absolutely fine to be perfectly honest, again, we there might you might see a tight, I'd say a fraction of a dip, maybe with some viewers who might have come just for the voices. But I think the majority, the mass majority of, of viewers, are coming for the entertainment. You know, they've probably passed that whole point where what the voices sort of sound like. They they like the comedy, they like the stories, they 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 enjoy everything else about it. So they're going to be here to stay. You know, for the long mm. run. Yeah, I think we're fine. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, Viper Sniper Piper. Our next one is from <gasps> Vladimir Putin. Oh, jeez. Yeah. He wants to be in more videos. Damn it. Oh, <laughs> He's like, I am still a president. Too. I'm not, I have no I am technically severe president. lack. <laughs> I um, mean, uh, he won once, but yeah. Our political views on the... No, I'm not going to answer that one. Thank you, Vladimir. Uh, what music do you listen to while you are making content? Ah, that's an interesting one. So, uh, Vox, you want to start us off? What was the question you got out? Ah, son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> what music do you listen to while you are making content? I don't. No? Okay, fair enough. Ashram? I don't... I got I, I to gotta hear my voice lines. I got I to gotta concentrate. 
Um, yeah, I'm with you on that, except for the fact that I do a lot of sound edits with my content. So if I'm listening to music, that kind of screws everything over because then I can't do the job. Um, yeah. While I'm transcribing lines, when I don't have to rely on sound stuff, I'm typically listening to like video game soundtracks. Um, the, Octopath, the Octopath soundtracks, I've never played any of those games, but they are kick-ass and I love them. Yeah, fair enough. Mecca? Um, it's a, like a combination. Like I have lo-fi on the computer while I'm making it because it's low enough that it doesn't interfere with the listening to the voices. And then I have the TV behind me on with like some TV show going on. It's loud enough that I'll hear, but I I, I just need noise to be honest. No, fair enough. <laughs> I'm just weird like that. No, no, that's fair, mate. Whatever works for your process, go for it. Uh, Mel, uh, I listen to Ben Shapiro on two times speed. <laughs> oh God! Mm -hmm. ASMR. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I I don't listen to anything while I'm writing or making the videos. I need to hear the lines, no. and when I'm writing, I just don't want any other distractions in the space. No problem. No problem. Aura. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Conway Twitty. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh jeez. There you go. Uh, Lord of the Rings soundtrack. Oh nice. From the people. Oh, yeah. That's awesome too. Oh, very nice. Um, myself, the only time I've actually got music going on is when I've put it on the video that I'm editing. That's that's literally the only music here. The rest of the time, it's just the sound of the of my own goblins inside my head. Uh, but thank <laughs> you uh, very much, Mr. Putin. Um, right. Oh, another one from Eric Silvertongue. Um, this one's to Mal. Um. Are there any other creators uh, that have ever helped inspire you? Yeah, um, I think I mentioned this on the podcast that I did with Crafty, like, yeah, forever ago. Um, but before I even got started, I had seen Clone's first D&D &D video, um, and then I had seen all of Crafty's up to that point. Um, and I think those are the only two that I had found before. Oh, and Relicky. I think I had watched one of his. Yo, Crafty got in that early. Yeah, I was like the the fifth. Mm -hmm. I was like the fifth D and D president channel. Um, wow. Yeah, and no one else before me is still around. Uh, Clone came in about five, about five channels later, and I've got a list of it. I've got a list of it somewhere. Yeah, Reliki started like a week before I did. So I think I had just seen the first one of his Curse of Strahd videos. Um, but I think I'd say the video that most inspired me would have to be Crafty's for sure. Woohoo! So yep. anybody else who says that Malifrex inspired them, I'm the grandpa of inspiration. So you that's all, true. You've yep. come, um, come for a bit of me. <laughs> I would probably not have started my channel without Crafty's channel being around. So. Indication! <laughs> I, I remember probably, oh sorry go ahead yeah I, I probably wouldn't have started my channel if all the other channels weren't around but um clone studios was easily my biggest inspiration uh, clone um, is just his, fucking hilarious he is <laughs> i'm glad he he's comments, come back as well because he had a bit of a he had a woman for a bit of a break yeah he had a long hiatus hmm. yeah i think, he, think he stopped making content back in february if i remember correctly and then he just started making it like uh, about a month ago. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully Eleven Labs hasn't screwed him too much and he'll be able to carry on. But uh, thank you very much, Eric. Uh, right, so we have one. Ah, we have one from AI D D Campaign, the fellow who uses uh, Peter Griffin. He's hey. uh, Are you all able to watch your own content as a viewer without a creator's mindset only after a enough time has passed i cannot watch my own content if i have just made it or if i have just released it which is weird because i watched through my entire movie like from beginning to end right before i upload mm -hmm. that's sort of been a tradition for me and after that i'm just so burnt out of watching that video over and over again for like five times straight that I just cannot watch it until maybe like four months after the fact. Yeah. Oh, fair play. Uh, Mecca? Like, so like, wait, the question is that like, can you watch your videos after you make them? So are you able to watch your own content as a viewer 
without a creator's mindset. So, oh, like, do you enjoy it? Because, like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because, cause, like, I made my videos just for, like, me, essentially. I genuinely thought, hey, 10 people who don't know me, watch it. Cool. And and I got way more than that. And still, like, I, I did it because I, I just, I really wanted to, like, I didn't want the story that was going on in my head to just stay in my head, basically. And I wanted to listen to it. So, like, that's 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 my biggest driving forces. The videos, I'm glad people are enjoying them. They're for me. They're, they're genuinely for me. Like, I, it's just I want to bring it out. That's all. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I, I enjoy my own videos. But I also enjoy everybody's. Like, my playlists are huge because I have every single one of you on it. Nice. Uh, Fox? Huh? Uh, are you able to watch your own content as a viewer without? Oh yes, that was the question. Um, I, I I don't do it casually, but if I go in with the it's it's weird. I go in with the mindset initially, and then I I have to watch it on the side, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I can put I can watch it as side monitor content. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's that's easier for me to do. I. Yeah. No, fair enough. Um, Mal? I can only watch my videos on two times speed, and the only time that I watch them after I make them is when I premiere them. Um, yeah, I feel like it's really tough for me to get into the viewer mindset because I'm always thinking, oh, I could have done this better, or, oh, this audio clip, I wish I had redone that. And so I just have a really tough time watching them yeah. for fun from a viewer perspective. Yeah, fair um uh aura brother i'm so left of the bell curve i'm lucky to remember if i made the video or if i'm just watching <laughs> it for the first time no that's fair mate no appreciate the honesty um for me the only time i can i will generally be able to watch any of my own stuff as a viewer is the first time i play it when i sit down with my wife because at that point i'm just enjoying it with her other than that, I I cannot get my mind out of like any any slight error or anything. It's just like ah, oh, could have just added an extra bit there and could have made a little tweak there. And it's like, yep, I can't do it. It's just the one time I watch it. It's the first time I watch it, and after that, I I just don't want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> You're so Actually, attached you know to what? it, and then you just want to. Get as much distance from it as possible with his gun. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, I, I, I don't I, like it. It's just yeah, I I can't keep my mind out of the creator set. Yeah, I I get that feeling a lot. But uh, the one thing I can go go back and watch of mine pretty consistently is my tweaking videos. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's something I can go back and watch pretty consistently. I, I don't have to. I don't have to put too much effort into that. <laughs> it's just so fucking insane. Oh, yeah, they are, man. They are <laughs> so it's, I love it. It's just such. It's so fucking funny listening to those guys. It's, it's, again, I've, I have said it before, like when, you, when I had you on here. But it's the fact that you utilize the the crazy fucking sounds that come out of the <laughs> generations, and you make it work, like. Fuck me, like honestly. Yep. Well done. Because it's so well. It's so that's good. that's probably what I miss most of Eleven Labs, the way their voices broke. <laughs> honestly, they broke in such a funny, particular way. I like the way they break on play too. Don't get me wrong. The entire tweaking <laughs> presidents is that, but I like having options. You know. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. thank you, AI D and D campaign, for your <laughs> question, and good luck with your series, matey. It's really good. Um. Next one is from Mark of the Fist. No, sorry. Mark of the First, 854. How old are all of you? So uh, we'll start off with Aura. I just turned 30. Mal? I am 25. Mecca? Uh, I'm 29. Yeah, I'm 29. Ashen? Uh, 700. No, I'm, 20, <laughs> I'm 29. But he just, she just looks like a young vampire. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like a little girl. Oh my god! Oh jeez, Vox. No, no, Wally. <laughs> I think I'm 25. I am. You, sh you sure? <laughs> I am 37. 
Okay, thank you very much, Mark. I feel so Older young you, here. <laughs> Don't nickel and dime us, kid. Um, Better tell us who you are now. Got a question here <laughs> from Zach Smallwood, 7738. How long does it take to plan a campaign with the AI voices if everything goes right? Uh, Aura? Oh, it's our, you know, it's already my mind's mind's the probably the cheapest and the most boring answer. It's, uh, it's, it's already uh, planned. You know, I, uh, I guess, I guess the writing on my end was a little more elaborate, but you know how it is with the D and D campaign. You just kind of have to adapt and keep the overarching story. So, so not, not, not very, very long at all. I think I planned everything out in a two and a half hour car ride. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I just kind of, a lot of times now I go in and I don't even really know what the story is until I'm writing it. Um, back when I first started with my Loudwater campaign, that's been a personal campaign that I had been working on for, uh, several years at that point. I had played through it a couple times and, um, just refining it as I went along. Um, so, yeah, that one took a long time. Everything else really quick. Okay. Mecca? Um, it, it doesn't take the longest. It's just honestly finding the time to, like, just dedicate to it. Like, really, it, it's about, uh, I want to say 10%. That's how long it takes for, like, the videos. Like, the whole, like, process of my making is just, like, 10%. That's about, yeah, maybe, like, if I could sit down for three hours, I could definitely whip out. This last script was 27 pages, and it, yeah, it was three hours of writing, but, like, since it's a battle-heavy scene, I need to, like, actually be at the computer. I can't just do it at work, because there's so much stat information. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ashram? Um, I am, I'm so sorry. Could you please repeat the question? I was getting the buzzer thing lined up, uh, set up. Uh, how long does it take to plan a campaign with the AI voices if everything goes right? That's the that's the tricky part. If everything goes right, um, <laughs> I have pretty much the ending of the current arc already planned out. Um, the in betweens are a little bit iffy, but I know how Women Politicians is going to end, at least for this arc. Um, typically, like I just plan out the most exciting part first and then the beginning and then everything in between. Okay. And so that's kind of my workflow. I don't really have like a set timeline for how much I plan for these kind of stuff because it's just like I I have some parts of the plan established early and then I fill out most of the middle, but then I also need to tell myself not to get married to my ideas and to change things up within the middle if they don't work. Like, uh, for example, I had planned out an entirely different ending for Women Politicians 3. Then I realized, oh, wait, there's some actions that the characters did that just would not make sense with this. So I ended up having to rewrite, like, 30 pages. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's... Okay. Like, uh, yeah, planning them out is the easy part, and then acting on those plans is the hard part. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I say, for me, it's a bit of an odd one because my campaign is, is obviously based off a module. Tyranny of Dragons. Um, so I don't really necessarily need to plan the campaign. The campaign's already been sort of set up for me. I do sort of, I look at the individual chapters and I sort of try to plan, make a plan there, but a bit like with like Mel, it's obviously with the dice rolls and such, You, I try not to plan too far ahead because, again, everything could change. So I would say if I always cut it down to its bare minimum and plan an episode overall planning 30 minutes for like if i was to think about like from start to finish like how i think it's all gonna how i think it's all gonna play out and then i roll the dice and i might have to just adjust it from there i'm sorry i can't really give a very clear answer because i don't think there is a real way to give a clear answer in in this sort of setup but uh thank you very much zach for your question right uh next one is from Steely Thompson 1003. My biggest question for all the boys is what inspires you? What is the process in which how you create these interesting storylines with this deep back and forth banter and world building? 
especially with the Call of Cthulhu campaigns, the setting and world created is so immersive and a joy to watch every time, especially more than once. Keep up the momentum, Kings. Now, how much did I cut out there when I said that? I heard like all of it. 50 50 or so. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. It's <laughs> all right. I'll read it out one more time. Thank you. Um, what inspires you? And what is the process in which how you create these storylines with all the banter and world building? Oh boy, with uh, with all my very complicated and uh, in depth banter between the characters, um, that was sarcasm. <laughs> but um, I I honestly think that South Park has inspired me a lot in kind of the dynamics. Um, the real world inspires a lot of what I write because oftentimes people in the real world are even crazier than fantasy villains. It's it's insane how crazy real life can be, and so I get a lot of that like my inspiration from both South Park, uh, Family Guy, um, and then a bunch of other animated shows like Castlevania, Vinland Saga, um, uh, two big ones. Vox Machina is also a big one. But yeah, in terms of just like the actual like world building and stuff and like sort of what I get inspired by, it's pretty much just everything I just kind of listed there. The real world, especially. All right, cool. Uh, Mecca? Uh, every single one of, like, the you guys that created, like, Mad Thrax, Crafty, uh, Lone Studios, AI Guy, every single one of you guys creating the stories and using the presidents absolutely started, like, my interest in D&D, &D, and I wanted to play with my friends. That's when I just started the small, simple story. It's really beginner-friendly, just for that reason, because, like, I just wanted to hang out with my boys. And... For seeing that like to get started this whole story like i'm choosing like what each president has i guess essentially like one of their characteristics like trump's arrogant biden's absent-minded but like some people have made them like just whole smart moves out of nowhere um freaking obama's usually the like sound mind the 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 one who keeps everybody level-headed and george is just a wild card and this is just going off because i really like crucial crucial story his videos holy cow i love Preach. them they are the best just like story like the writing i don't know how he thought of all of that i don't know if you've seen his series i'd give it a watch even though i don't think he's coming back at all i don't blame him but like holy cow those videos are really really good and yeah everything just kind of tied up my inspiration is from real life my life events that have happened and there's a reason why like they're big cats and you guys, every single one of y'all. And then also, like, the new guys created, like, Aurora and President Nash and Hart. Like, I do watch y'all's videos, too. So, like, everybody also included that. It's just, they definitely started it. Like, you guys just making the videos. And the writing's good. Like, yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Mal? Um, yeah, I'd say most of my worlds are just kind of winged. Um, for Call of Cthulhu, the first one. Um, I didn't even know what the storyline was in general. I just had them go to a town and then wrote as it went. Um, for inspiration, though, um, I'm a big fan of gothic horror. I'm a big fan of, like I said, most... And uh, like Mechatron was saying, I'm a big fan of all of the um, AI presidents d and I watch... I, I'm catching up now from my break, but um, I try to watch everyone's as they come out. Um yeah, big fan of everyone in the space, for sure. Excellent. Uh, Aura? As far as dialogue, to quote a uh, uh, former president of the United States, locker room talk. I played football and wrestling, and, and that's just kind of how we grew up talking to each other. You know, and so I get, like, all the banter kind of from that. Uh, I really, really liked uh, presidential uh, Discord server before... Uh, uh, the incident, the end of the world, <laughs> dude. No, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I see you writing yeah. like that. Yeah. So you know, no, no problem. Uh, and then as far as like lore building, which is, I mean, if we if we really combined it, you know, like creating these fantasy worlds and then having such, you know, doofus people uh, <laughs> play it, it's 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 pretty funny. But I read a lot of Lewis, and I love Tolkien. 
Okay. So uh, uh, that's that's very uh, into into my space. Uh, so Fox, um, I think this huh? the question was a bit more uh, based towards like a D and D storytelling, but right. But what sort of inspires you uh, when it comes to creating your videos? My video. What inspires me when what? When creating your own videos. Um, it's probably when, whenever I see a good story that makes me want to write a good story, hmm. that's pretty much, uh, what inspires me most. Just seeing other people make good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I think for myself, I guess growing up playing a lot of RPGs, um, big on watching like fantasy, uh, fantasy programs and. Uh, movies um and i think in like recent years it was i guess uh, role playing with uh with friends uh for like when we were trying to like make videos like little like sketch comedy sketches and stuff and doing a bit of like amateur voice acting sort of thing um i think all that kind of stuff kind of sort of helped push my inspiration and then as I was making, as I started making the videos, just as a bit of a, more of a, just a bit of a gimmick more than anything, um, I eventually, you know, started seeing channels like, like Mao's and AI Guy and Clone stuff. And that sort of then helped push me more. That helped like, that helped like sort of give me fresh inspiration on, on, uh, on my own. But um, thank you very much, uh, Steve Thompson. Uh, next one is from Larry Z Channel 1037. Malifrex, will you be finishing your other COC series? I thought the writing was amazing. I had no idea how Donald was going to escape prison. Um, yep, so hopefully one day I will find that storyline again. Um, but it won't be next week and it probably won't be the week after that. Okay. <laughs> but we'll go from there. No problem. Thank you very much, Larry. Uh, the next one is from Black Mask 7772. What caused all of you to decide to create presidential AI content? Uh, Vox, let's start with yourself. So my story was, I actually, in the beginning, I was actually sort of terrified of the prospect of AI voices, and I sort of try, I tried avoiding it, you know? Because it was it was kind of scary. There's nothing like it, you know. You know, being able to replicate anyone's voice. Mm. I, I just wanted to I wanted to avoid it. But then I started seeing some really funny memes, you know, like of them playing COD zombies and stuff, you know, and then Crucial's videos and they're playing Uno and stuff, you know. And it's like this is actually pretty funny stuff, you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it. And then I became an avid watcher of it. And then I soon was going to make a compilation of all my favorite stuff from it. And then while I was making my compilation, I was just like, you know what? Why don't I just make it? <laughs> what am I, why make a comp? Why put all this work into a compilation when I can put all this work into making it myself? Yeah. No, that's fair. So that's what I did. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Um, Asham. Yep. Um, so I'm, I, I, I have such a short memory right now. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to I, come back to you? No, could you could you please repeat the question? I am so sorry. I, can't, I this is the third question in a row that I've asked you to repeat. What caused you to decide to create presidential AI content? Literally, just watching everybody else's and then realizing, wait, everyone else's has the presidents. They're not using other politicians. Like very few of them are using other celebrities, but usually it's the three po presidents all doing it. And so I'm like. There are way crazier people than just these three. I'm going to make my own, see what I can do. And, uh, you know, it's been a while since I made a movie as well because I graduated from college with a bachelor's degree in film production. Right. And it's, you know, barely really used my bachelor's degree for a lot of jobs aside from uh, public access studio one. But um, just being able to use, like, some skill sets that I had into a personal project that people actually really like was one of the big motivators for me. Oh, fair enough. Uh, Mecca. 
Um, <clears throat> well, definitely, I got like inspiration from everybody of you guys, like making the videos. The fact that Mel Chatron made that video, basically showing you how you can do the voices yourself. That that was it. Like that. That's what made me do it because I couldn't come up with a reason not to. And like the moment I opened Filmora, got one voice, and it literally said it, it was uh, the voice where um, Don, Donald is going and he takes a sip of water. That voice because my my friend John did that in the campaign, and I was just blown away because I wasn't expecting this man to drink water instead of attack the two zombies that are staring at him. He drinks water and. Yeah, Melchitron is what started. Like, absolutely. I got to give it to him. That video, if he hadn't made that video, I wouldn't have made mine. And yeah, it's all him. All right, fair enough. Uh, Mel? It's crazy, man. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Great stuff. Um, yeah, so I got started. Um, so after I'd seen Clone's video, and then I went searching and I found all of Crafties at the time. Um, I was running a DD and d campaign, but for scheduling reasons we hadn't been able to meet in a long time um and so initially i made the videos just as kind of like a gift to my players like hey now you get to relive our adventures so far um but it's the ai presidents having a good time um and then the channel just kind of blew up so i just kept going i never met with that group again um because of scheduling conflicts and then it just sort of faded away um but the channel just stuck around all right sweet and aura well, you know, I I, I bat watched uh, all y'all uh, starting off, and and I have one of those jobs where I'm, and, and this really definitely reflects in my channel. Uh, you know, I did I did radio for a number of years, and and uh, just love long form audio podcasts. So like originally, and and you could even go back, you know, Malthrex. I would like occasionally ask you how you did it, and I would kind of get it in my brain. You know how how uh, that that works, and so you know um, eventually I watched Coco Mimi and 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 Melchitron, and uh, I kind of put together my own campaign, and I had played D and D ever since I was like seventeen or so, and, and off and on, and so I wanted to be a DM, and so I did the DM thing, and then I thought to myself, going back to like my my radio background, and and that there's like. A great uh, opportunity here to create long form audio. Uh, I, I I wanted to you know continue to saturate the 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 community and and then even kind of listen to it you know for myself and I didn't really expect much and and then uh, and then Crafty kind of helped me guided me and and shared my, my my first video and and you know ever since then it's just been uh, addicting to continue to work with audio and i and i really love it excellent um for myself uh it was so right at the beginning uh it was even before the the anyone had actually uploaded any uh presidents uh D, &D. it might have even been before like anything big was coming out on YouTube or anything where really he started it. I was listening to a podcast. Uh, I was listening to a Tim Paul podcast and they brought up about 11 labs and they're saying about that. Uh, there's this crazy video that's been going around on uh, X might've been Twitter. I think it was Twitter at the time. Uh, and it was Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And I think they were playing fallout. And someone had put something together and it was like a video was like two minutes long and i remember listening to it and i was roaring with laughter I thought, oh my god i've 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 never heard anything like this before this this is comedy gold this is so brilliant and i then spent like i think it was like a week later i spent a couple of days looking on on youtube just seeing like oh where could i find that clip and i started seeing like these channels now popping up with all these different all these different sort of videos and after like a day of this i suddenly had the idea i was like oh is anyone doing the president's playing dungeons and dragons because i had not long been getting into the podcast and i was you know really getting into D D, and i thought oh this would be a fantastic sort of way sort of to get into that sort of space and there was like two or three channels that had only done like one episode at that point i think meme uh, D and D dice just was just starting as well. Now, now he might have been doing it on, like I don't know if he was doing it on Instagram or 
uh, TikTok or wherever it was, and then he was bringing the stuff onto YouTube. And I thought, yeah, okay, you know, I'm going to give this a go. And that's what, that's what, that's how I, I got going with it. But um, thank you very much, Black Mask. I should also say that clone was also one of the one of the inspirations, just because his stuff was so funny. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, so uh, funny. The, his special shout out to uh, to Tech and AI for helping me get it off the ground too, because I uh, uh, needed that last minute encouragement. He had just uploaded and and then, you know, I asked him some of the tools he was using, and then boom, finally got one out. So. Yeah, thank you all for uploading as frequently as you do because uh, it helps me stay motivated to actually make content. So that's oh. also good. Yeah, I don't think anyone would be uploading if we none of like there was no one else doing it, right? Uh, exactly. Yeah. It's sort of like uh, what's that sort of phrase like self perpetuating sort of thing. It's like one uploads, which then inspires another to upload, which probably inspires then the first guy to re-upload again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The more people that upload, the better, you know. And Aye. Aye. make you know, we want to make quality content. So let's let's make, all come together, make some good content, and get some viewers on all of us, you know. Aye, indeed. Uh, the next question is from Squaw, and his question was Squaw. However, Ooh. he has since elaborated. <laughs> Any plans for a cameo of future vice president for any of y'all? Evil one would be funny as hell. I need to mute myself for a sec because I'm going to choke. Oh, gotta boy. Ch what? <laughs> you got a choke? I got, I got, got a bit choke. Of, got a bit of... Ah, uh, so that's something just down the back of my throat there. Oh. <laughs> and Electric like fence, gotta... pants. Oh, geez. Um, I, I mean, it, uh, if Tim Walls becomes VP, he's going to be hilarious. I, I'm envisioning him like as sort of a football coach type of guy. And then him playing D&D &D with, with uh, Dick Cheney. And uh, Mike Pence is like the sort of sort of mewling, cowardly guy who calls his wife mother. Um, that's sort of what I've got Very going partisan. on in my head right now. Oh, totally. Yeah, no, I, I, I make my, I make my opinions very apparent in my characters. Yep. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Uh, anyone else? Uh, no. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's fair. Um, <laughs> to be honest, the only people I, I know of as vice presidents is Kamala Harris, and then obviously when Joe, Joe Biden, Biden. Uh, and Joe Biden. <laughs> Let's literally, uh, I, I know nothing about any of the other vice presidents. You're not Dick Cheney. I've oh, heard the that's name. Right, Dick I've heard the name, but I, I, I guess I have included him. The biggest, the biggest he, uh, reference I know of him is I think they brought him into Family Guy or something, and he's like he's standing at the entrance <laughs> of Walmart, Walmart, and he's like, "Go fuck yourself, go fuck yourself." That's like yeah. that's all I know. <laughs> yeah. of him. Well, he shot a guy uh, oh, that's in the, the middle dude. of the woods, right. and then the guy apologized to him. So I had to, I had to include that as uh, he's a evil uh, character in my campaign. <laughs> Ah right, okay. Oh, that's I gotta rewatch yours. I don't think I, I don't remember Dick Cheney in yours, but I gotta rewatch yours now. Right. Well, thank you very much, Squaw. And Mark of the first eight five four with another question: Have any of you watched Game of Thrones? Yes, all eight, all six seasons. Um, no, I actually have not. I have not either. Okay, cool. I was gonna feel yeah. self-conscious. Uh, no, I can't. I can't. Watch. How am I the only one who's watched all six, uh, all eight, all six seasons of Game of Thrones? I I have seen all of Game of Thrones. I wish I hadn't seen the last couple of seasons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you and I both. Yeah. I I want them to be like do to Game of Thrones what they did to Full Metal Alchemist, where they just remake the entire series once the entire book series is done. That would be nice. Um, I had recently started watching the House of the Dragon, the the the, the new like spin off or like the prequel or wherever it's supposed to be. That doesn't seem so bad. I've I've watched a couple of episodes. It seems okay. There's nothing that's really pulling me in. But then, to be fair, when Game of Thrones very first came out, like <clears throat> I thought the first episode was pretty. Bleh. 
up until like right, mid, yeah. right until the end, and it, that was like the shocker, and that was the sort of thing that sort of yeah. hooked when me, uh, spo- it? spoiler alert, uh, Shine Bean dies. Oh yeah, that was a bit of a shocker one, but uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but thank you very much, Mark. Uh, we have James Meow three zero three nine. Uh, this is another regular uh, viewer. What is the hardest part about making videos? Uh, I think we we have covered that already. Um, what would make it easier for you to produce videos? And is there anything viewers and other creators could help with to make the process easier? So, mm. what would make it easier to produce videos? I guess having more more availability, more more free time. To be honest. Um, I think this is where uh, I would say anybody who's particularly young who gets involved into doing stuff like this will have a slight advantage in some respects because, you know, they won't have a mortgage to take care of. They might not necessarily have like a a full time job, possibly. Um, It's not to say that they won't have commitments, but they wouldn't have the same sort of level. So they have a little bit more free time. The downside is that they might not have the sort of income needed for like subscriptions and such. But I would say if you were still able to keep the sort of level of income that you've got and have more availability, that would be a a huge, I think that would be a huge help to like to making these sort of videos. Would everyone sort of agree with that? I think think it's probably the the factor there, wouldn't it? More time, more money. Yeah, it'd be easier to make this sort of stuff. Yeah, but Malthrex might have just given us a little leg up, though, with his little yes. creation. Yeah, <laughs> that is very true. That is very true. That's yep, just going to the helps out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would say as far as viewers, anything out viewers that could do, just keep doing what you guys do. He's honestly, you, you're all, like I said before, and I'll keep saying it, best community I've ever known. Uh, I'm sure everybody else here, we've, we've all sort of said the same sort of thing. You know, we all think you guys are, are fantastic. Just keep on watching the content, share it with your friends, comment below, subscribe, like, do all the bits and pieces that YouTube really wants you to do. And yeah, just carry on doing what you're doing. And that'll be Yeah, I'd say. Effort. And if you I'd have say money, you should a donate. Big part of it. <laughs> what, what? Hold on. I heard money. Yeah, if you have money and you don't want that money, you can give me that money, and then I will use it to pay for subscription fees. <laughs> uh, what would you say, Vox? I, I said sharing is a big part of it. Share it with uh, as many people as you think would be interested. Show them your favorite stuff. That is very true. Yeah. Sharing is a big part. YouTube, the algorithm loves it when uh, links bring you to the site. Sharing is caring. Oh yeah, hundred uh, percent. The caring was the sharing in? we made along the way. <laughs> it sure is. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much, James Meow. Uh, right. Uh, we're on the final question. Uh, this one is High Fist six seven five four. Malafrex, any progress on the D and D campaign? Really enjoyed your latest videos. Good to have you back. Well, it's good to be back. Um, there will be a different D and D series going out, not next week, but potentially the week after that, or the week after that. Um, a little one shot. Um, I'm not giving myself a deadline, so I'm not going to say what it is, and it might not even be D and D. So we'll see. But there is D and D in the pipeline. We'll say that. Oh, excellent! Ooh. You've just heard it here, exclusive on Roll for Discussion. Let's fucking go. Right, thank you all very much, viewers, for your questions. It's been highly appreciated. We're going to get on to the final part of the podcast. We're going to be playing a little game put together. Okay, so you should have a buzzer option. Um, I have got it currently set on lock, so you won't be able to buzz in at the moment. How it's going to work, we have four categories. we got What's That? Save Me? D&D History, and AIP Trivia. We're going to... How's it going to work? Is that we're going to go randomly on who's going to go first. They're going to pick a category, and then there's going to be a question associated with the category. I'll explain how that category works. 
the winner of that question is going to get X amount of points, depending on how it's how it goes down, and they get to choose what the next category is. So there are going to be five questions for each category. I'm going to be keeping a tally of scores. And once we've gone through all the questions, or there's going to be a very clear winner, then we're going to announce the winner, and that's going to be the end of the game. So everybody who is watching, you can also take part as well. Um, see if you can answer the questions as they come up. Give yourself a point if you get it right. Give yourself a couple of points if you get it right, uh, depending on the question. You'll see what I mean. I haven't probably explained that very well, so if anyone's a bit confused, bear with me. I'll tell you what, you Vox, you can start us What's off. up? You can start us off, Okay. Mate. You can pick a category. We have What's That, Save Me, D&D &D History, and AIP Trivia. Now, just to give you a heads up, What's That is I will show you all a distorted image of a D&D &D monster. You will have 10 seconds to tell me what the monster is. The image will become clear at the end of the 10 seconds. And you will receive two points if you guess it correctly while the image is distorted. And you get one point when the image is clear. Save me. I'm going to read out a spell or an ability, or maybe an attack, that will require a particular type of save. If you can name the saving throw after just reading out the after I've just read out the title, you can get two points. However, if you can answer it while I've written out the description, you get one point. D&D history, pretty self-explanatory. It's just general history about D&D &D or things around D&D. &D. And AIP trivia is stuff about uh, well, our channels and others. So knowing that, Uvox, which category would you like? I'm going to do a AIP. AIP. Okay, right. Let me just pull that aside. I'm going to unlock. I was thinking about doing the monsters, but let's do the AIP. AIP mm -hmm. it is. Right. Okay. So I have several questions here. I'm going to pick one at random. Now, I've taken off the buzzer. First one to buzz in gets to answer first. If you are correct, you will get the points. If you're incorrect, you cannot buzz back in until everybody else has had a go. So it's down to you when you wish to answer this. It is a simple one point for a correct answer. What is the DM, or rather who is the DM, used in the campaign created by Gimme Your Belt Studios? Oh, wait, fuck. Uh, it's... it's That's a... Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who got it? Who got it? Who got it? You got Vox it? got him first. It's uh, the guy who plays uh, Daryl Dixon, right? I'm going to need a name of the actor. I don't know his name. I don't know actor names. I don't know names well. I'm afraid, though, that is, it is incorrect. So it's going to go to Aurora. Uh, Sean Bean. Sean Bean is correct. Mm. Woo! Okay, right. I'm going to reset the buzzers. So, Aurora, would you like AIP trivia? D, D history, save me, or what's that? And I can participate on the category I choose. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You, you, you all do, but you get to decide which category. As okay, the and then I, okay, okay, uh, and I can buzz in on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every okay. every single okay. question oh, you can. Okay. The, the only thing that's different is because you were correct on this one. You've gotten, you get yourself one point, and you also now get to decide which category is picked okay. next. Let's go with D&D uh, &D History. D&D &D History. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to highlight that. Right. Um, okay. Here's a nice straightforward one for all the mateys. What year was D&D &D created? <laughs> Mecha King Leo. Uh, 1890. That is... <laughs> That is incorrect, Aurora. <laughs> 1974. That is correct. Ooh. All right. Nice. Okay, we're going to clear the buzzers. All right, Aurora, pick your next category. 
Let's keep rolling. I want to do more D&D history. D&D history. Okay, the buzzers are open. Um, which year did the D&D cartoon debut? President Ashton Hart. I'm going to take a guess and say 1982. I'm afraid that is incorrect. Uh, Mecha King. Uh, 2013. That is also incorrect. Uh, Uvox. All right, let's uh, 78. Incorrect. Malafrex. Uh, 91. Incorrect. Aura. Uh, is it uh, 1980? It's, I know it was in the 80s. That is incorrect. I tell you what, though, I'm going to give it to the player who got the closest with within one year. It is going to go to President Ashenhart. It came, it debuted in 1983. Ooh, oh, neat. close. Neato. So, I was going to guess 82. Fuck. So, That's my second uh, guess. Clear the, clear the buzzers. Ashen, which category would you like, sir? Um, let's do D&D history. Going back with a D and D history. Okay. What are the free core rule books that have been produced for the last several versions? Malafrex. Uh, Mal. Oh, I was muted. Player's Handbook, Monster Manual, Dungeon Master's Guide. That is absolutely correct. Okay. Now, right then, so you may pick the next category. Um, I want to see what's that. So where do we see the distorted image? Do you send it in Discord? I'm going to post it in um, Discord. Right, image is coming in, and you mm. may have 10 seconds while it will remain blurred. First one <sighs> to buzz in and correctly guess what the monster is is going to win two points. If you wait until it has been cleared, it'll be one point for uh, answered correctly. Here it comes. Mecca. A uh, red dragon. A red dragon is indeed correct. Uh, there it is. Oh. I was going to guess a warrior. I I have only seen a couple of legs there, but now I can I can totally see it. <laughs> I thought that was a bit too obvious. I was going a little bit crazy. I was thinking crazy things. I was thinking like, yeah. that must be a Mephit or something, a Mephit. A couple of, <laughs> I will admit, there's going to be some of these are a little must easy. Must be a demon. And some of them are a little bit dif more difficult. So, Mecca. Uh, let's try Save Me. We're going to go with Save Me. Okay, right. So, buzzers have been... How does the Save Me category work again? Okay, so I'm going to read out either a spell, an ability, or an attack. Like, just the name of it <clears throat> these all require a particular type of saving throw i'm then going to read out the text that comes with that ability attack or spell leaving out what the saving throw is if you can yes. tell me what it is if uh, just when reading out what the name of the ability is just be, sorry as i say the name of the ability if you can tell me what what the saving throw is you will get two points if you can tell me when the text has been read out, you get one point. Okay, that all makes sense for everyone? Yeah, all okay. for me. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Right, so, uh, all cleared. Right, hold person. Go for Mecca. Uh, wisdom check. Wisdom saving throw? That is absolutely correct. That is two points to you, sir. Ooh, yes. Right. Uh, could you please pick our next category? Um, <clears throat> AIP? Yeah, let's go AIP. AIP. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> One of the newer content creators that has entered the presidential space is Uncle Sam AI. Who is the DM that he uses? Go for you, Vox. Jeff Goldblum. That is <laughs> correct. <laughs> I hate you. 
There's a, a, a beautiful architecture. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, right. Uh, which category, please? All right, let's do the let's do the monster one. We're going to go back to the monster. All right, very That's good. right. Clearing the buzzer. Okay, we're dropping in the new monster in three, two, one. Go for you, Vox. Oh, that one's actually kind of hard. Uh, Bugbear? That is incorrect. Ashen? Uh, it, it's a frog person, but I don't know the race name. It's like a frogman. You're on the right track, buddy, but I can't, can't get yeah. it to you. Uh, aura? A bullywog. That is correct. Uh, oh, I gotta uh, put this on my bigger monitor. That doesn't look like a bugbear at all. What the fuck? <laughs> <Not a bugbear. laughs> I was on my I was that was on my little monitor and I was I couldn't even I, I could barely make out the silhouette. <laughs> I took a closer look and it's just like what the <laughs> <laughs> Just put a, a little clearer image there. Hey, what, what there's the I would not have guessed that right anyway though. I, I <laughs> Yeah, I think a bullywog's just like the frog people from Pikmin. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a Wally Wog. Uh, so, uh, Aura, which category? Ooh. Let's go with uh, API. AIP, very good. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's right. Um, we were talking about APIs earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Which content creator has the highest viewed first episode of their D&D campaign? <laughs> Go for Ashen. Who is Clone Studios? That is correct. I'll give you uh, an, I'll give you a bonus point if you can tell me roughly how many views. Sorry, it, yeah. it cut out. Yeah, you, I'll give you a bonus yeah. point if you can tell me roughly how many views. How many views? Uh, it's, isn't it over a million? That is correct. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea it was that it, much. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's the viral one. Yeah, yep. it's the one that I, I, I started think, watching like, early on, but he didn't it. have that many views. I haven't watched it in a while. What the? <laughs> right, um, Ashen, which category, please? Um, let's go. Uh, save me. All right, excellent. Okay, clear the buzzers. Web. Go for Mecca. Uh, Constitution. That is incorrect. Asham? Oof. Is it Dex? It is Dex. Ooh. All right. I was juggling between strength and Dex. <laughs> right. Next category, please. Um, Let's go save me again. Save me again. All right. Excellent. Uh, we're right. Clear those buzzers. We're going to go with Paralyzing Touch. Go for Mal. I believe that one is Constitution. That is absolutely correct. Okay, two on there. Yoink. Right. Uh, which category, please? Uh, let's do another D&D history. D&D history. Okay. What 2016 Netflix series repopularized D and D? Vox Machina. That is incorrect. Ah, oh, frick. Uh, Wait, aura no, AI. Uh, w uh, I believe it's Stranger Things, but I couldn't hear what he said. It was Stranger Things. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, Vox Machina was on um, Amazon. Amazon Prime. Yeah, that was in the 2020s. So what was that? That was Aura. Got that one. Right. Okay. Let's uh, highlight that off. Right. Aura. Which one? All right. Um, how about uh, uh, let's do the uh, the the community one again? That uh, IP. It's not IPA. That's what I drink. <laughs> uh. <laughs> AIP. AIP, got it. All right, here we go. So this one's really going to test your knowledge, mateys. Who 
was the very first content creator to make a video on President's Play D&D. Oh, Are we allowed to research? No. <laughs> no! Uh, Mecca? Was it Relic? It is not Relic, no. Oh. Asham? Was it Meme D&D Dice? Nope. Aura? Mm. I believe, didn't they, he had like a wolf in the name, right? Can I get a half point if that's correct? It was like wolf. <laughs> <laughs> right? Didn't it have Bernie Sanders as the D? Or, or am I remembering yeah, a different I, one? I think you're on the right path, matey. You're on the right path, but we still have Mao <laughs> and you, Vox, to have a guess. Okay. Well, you guys got a hint now. Wolf something. Matterfrex? Uh Space Wolf. I'm afraid that is incorrect, you, Vox. Uh. Uh. Uh, I don't think that's. Man, I don't have an answer. answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wolf! You, so Mal and Aura, you were both you were very close, uh, but unfortunately, there is no winner on this one. Uh, the answer was Saber Wolf. Mm. Oh, I yeah, I do remember yeah, that watching it. Immediately hit yeah as soon as you said it yeah. It hit me. Uh, it, I only really remembered it because uh, our conversation with uh, Lithakai. Gotcha. I recognize that name. I would never yeah, guess it though, but I recognize it. <laughs> I haven't watched his. Um, you Vox, you pick a category for us. Uh, me. Uh, let's do the, the save me. Gonna go for save me. All right, let's clear those buzzers. And acid splash. Go for Asham. Is that a con save? It is incorrect, Mecca. No. Uh, dexterity. That is correct. Uh, okay. Mecca. Uh, let's go with what's that? We're gonna go with what's that? Very good. Let me just highlight that off. Okay. Next one coming in in three, two, one. I don't think the buzzers have been cleared. Shoot. Yeah, they have not been. Uh, beep. <laughs> Mecca? Uh, Death Knight? That is correct. But wow. uh, I am going to, I'm afraid, cancel this one because, rightly so, I did clear the buzz. I did not clear the buzzers, and so I can't guarantee that you would have been the first one to buzz in. So no, no, you're, you're good. I'm just honestly shocked I got it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this game is buzzer. rigged. Thankfully, I rigged. did have a backup, so that's uh, it's all good. Right. Buzzers are clear. Monster coming in in three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Go for oh. <laughs> what is a Hydra? That is absolutely correct, sir. All right. Uh, Look at those. I didn't hear if I was correct or not. Yeah, you're like that is absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this... I'm about to say that was my guess too. So if he's the wrong, rat then... king of 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 beasts, uh, just a lot yeah, of heads. I, I looked at it and I was like, "Fuck, I know what that is." I'm not gonna remember the name though. Damn it! <laughs> What's a dragon but has heads? All right. <laughs> uh, so Ashen, if you could pick us a category, please. Um, let's do AIP. AIP. This will be the last AIP uh, available question. So. Let's have a look. This one's for 500 points. <laughs> um, what is the name of the campaign that was uploaded by both Brickhouse AI and Meme and Lost Minds of Handover. That is correct. Woo! Nice. You pulled that out like Wild Bill Hickok did his pistol, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you had that in the chamber. Okay. AIP trivia is now done. There can no longer be picked as a category. You still have one for D&D &D history, one for Save Me, and two for What's That? Uh, two for What's That? Let's finish out D&D &D history. Going in for the D&D &D history. Uh, okay, here we go. Right, let's clear the buzzers. <clears throat> Which D&D &D race is based on Tolkien's Hobbits. Go for Mecca. Uh, the dwarves? 
That is incorrect. Uh, go to Ashen. Gonna go with Halfling. That is correct. That's the view. I was gonna say gnome, but then I'm like, wait, no, gnome's not correct. <laughs> yeah, they can't. Uh, D and uh, Wizards of the Coast can't use it because uh, uh, I think the Tolkien family still have Hobbit trademarked. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're, uh, yeah. They're in the. You can find it in the homebrew "do not use" category, yeah. along with pixies. Uh, oh, jeez, Ashen. Uh, so we can't have D and D history anymore. We have one more for save me and two for what's that? I'll do the what is that. If that's still a category. It is. There are two left for that one. Uh, right. I'll do the the what is that. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Coming in in three, two, one. Go for it. Lord. It's a mimic. It is yeah. indeed a mimic. Oh, yeah. I see it now. That, I, thought, that I thought from the distance. That, I thought from the distance it was like a hunched over hag. Yeah, I, I, I saw the light in that. I saw the light in the tongue, and, and I'm like, I, yeah. I thought it was a bed knob. Or what is a living school. rook? Yeah, I thought it was the night hag. But... Yeah, I, I did too. I thought I thought that was like the bottom of the dress. That's what that was. And then like it was a hunchback. <laughs> okay. um, I, let's finish off that category. Okay, right. This is evil. Clearing the buzzers. Right, the final one for what's that coming in in three two pokemon two and a half one don't do this <laughs> to me ashen oof that is a hard one i want to say direwolf that is incorrect mecca uh albert that is correct Ooh, good one yeah. look okay. kind of purple what's going on there how'd you get that uh it's because I think the picture he's about to use, I've been staring at it for, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, that, I've cool, been staring yeah. at that for like a while because it's coming in. It's coming in. It's, it's coming in. Let's just say that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so the last one is save me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. It's an attack called tail from a horned devil. Go for Ashen. What the fuck? I want to say Khan. That is correct. Woo! Oh Excuse my. Excuse me, what's that called? Oh, it's it's called... It's called what? Uh, it's the it's an attack called Tail. Tail Whip. It's just... Uh, it's just... It's just... It's a Pokemon. That's all it is. I thought you knew Pokemon. When you said the monster name, thought... I'm like, okay, that's definitely like a big guy. Like, so it's probably going to be like, okay, you got to be big and bulky to resist it. No. That, yeah, that's a Pokemon <laughs> attack. And it doesn't even attack. It just lowers their defense. Who's that Pokemon? And so that uh, comes <laughs> to the whip. end of the D&D uh, mini cheating. game. That's <laughs> It's cheating. Um, You're a nerd in, if you beat me. You're a nerd. Coming in at last place with <laughs> one point is Uvox. <laughs> um, whatever you guys are a bunch of sweaty nerds anyways get outside and touch grass <laughs> too late I already did touch grass in fourth Once. place we have Malifrex with four points in third place we have Aurora AI with five points Woo! in second place with eight points it's Mecha King Leo and Woo. our winner with an impressive 12 points is President Ashen Hart. Yippee! I, I really came back in the end. I was doing bad at first. Uh, that was nicely done. Honestly, you uh, that was uh, absolutely fantastic. Thank I can I know what pictures look like. That's that, I'm good at pictures. Right. <laughs> Obviously, viewers, let us know in the comment section how many points did you end up getting. And be honest, there's no harm in uh, in, in losing. Just ask you, mm -hmm. Fox. And <laughs> what's my what's my prize? Uh, the prize is you have the title of reigning champ of the Crafty's terrible D and D mini trivia game that doesn't <laughs> oh. have a title. It's a badge of honor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember this for the rest of my life. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> And so that is going to bring us to the end of uh, a very lengthy episode of uh, Roll for Discussion. 
thank you everybody that has taken part thank you viewers if you've stuck around to this point and you're still awake we very much appreciate it and if you did enjoy this content please make sure to hit the subscribe button smash the like give it a share leave a comment down below uh, i'm going to give everybody a uh, chance to say their farewells and if you want to guys want to plug your channels plug your discords plug your gofundmes your only fans you know whatever it is you got no problem <laughs> i will drop links for all of it down in the description just make sure you make it nice clear what it is we'll start off with aura ai well it is a pleasure for you to include me and and to you know all my Partners out there listening, it's uh, time to ride off into the sunset. And I just want to thank for stopping by and, you know, you tuning in to Crafty GG's channel. Until next time, keep your spurs sharp and your hat high. I'll see you on the next trail. You take care now. You hear you look up Aurora AI. It's a, it's a terrible spelling. Go to the description and go to patreon.com slash Aurora AI. Thank you very much, Malifrex. Um, yeah, it's it's been great. Um, I'm really happy to be back involved with the community. Um, and thanks, Crafty, for hosting us. Um, this was a really cool conversation. Um, as for plugging the channel, I have the uh, the finale for Mansions of Madness premiered today when this releases. And then the Supercut is going to be releasing on Sunday. Um, I have a Discord channel. So if you want to talk more about the campaigns or ask me questions or anything like that, you can join the Discord. I do not have a Patreon, but I do have a Buy Me a Coffee link on my channel description as well. Thank you very much. Rebecca? Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to keep making the videos of the d d It's been really great actually being here talking to you guys. It, I don't know. It was, it, I came in super nervous, but it was really easy just to like, it seems like we're all just bros, honestly. And it was really great talking to y'all. Um, a lot of insight to a lot of these things. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm going to keep going. Yeah, just check out my YouTube channel, Mecha King Leo. Uh, the name is just because that's my personal one and I'm too lazy to change it. Uh, just, yeah, uh, if you have any to catch me, I'm in Crafty server, I'm in Brickhouse servers, and the Air Force One that Uvox is, advertises. I'm in those. I don't have a lot of time to really do like a Discord server for myself, but if you want to like at me in any of those, I'll, I'll reply. Like, you can summon me. Like, it's all good. Um, and yeah, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy the videos. I'm going to make other stuff too, but the D&D is like my babies. Like, no. Like, that, that that's my that's my bread and butter. Those are my joys. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, Asham? Yeah, um, so my, yep, I have, I'm President Ashen Heart. I have a YouTube channel called President Ashen Heart. Um, if you want to uh, join me on my discord you can do that i believe i have that in my about me section and um, my next episode is coming out uh saturday the november 9th at six o'clock p.m that will be premiering so if you want to ask me questions there in the chat uh feel free to do that and um live long and prosper and live your best life thank you very much and finally you vox all right, uh, one of these things is not like the other, but uh, <laughs> check out the AI Force One Discord to connect with a ton of other uh, mostly non-D&D YouTubers with Malathrex being the exception. And um, yeah, we, there's like 18 of us, including me. And uh, give me $100 on Ko-Fi and donate a dollar on my co uh, on my GoFundMe to help repair a fence that broke, uh, that broke in my backyard after a tree fell on it. Oh, damn. That sucks. Oh, well, thank you very much for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, all the content creators, for joining me tonight. Thank you, all mateys, who have been uh, watching this. Until next time, have a good evening.